dawn of the American Revolutionary War of 1776. A tangled web of conspiracy spans North America. In the war of survival, it does not matter what your creed, color, culture, or gender is. All stand together. Thomas Paine's common sense is held aloft in every rebel patriot's hand as they take up arms against the British Empire. But as the revolution has begun, something far more mysterious stirs. Agents of the occult entreat both the Continental Army and Loyalist Redcoats. Freemasons conspire in the city of brotherly love. Marilyn is in the throes of a witch hunt by the Knights Templar. Amid the chaos, other grim fairy tales have emerged. Reports of witches have been seen in the Great Dismal Swamp. Indigenous Sakem say the devils called Manato walk among the living. Flesh-gobbling ghouls have been tunneling beneath Boston. The Pine Barrens of New Jersey are haunted by what the locals call the Leeds Devil. And worse still, an ancient enemy whose name is never uttered aloud seeks to consume all, loyalists and rebels alike. In this game, most people have either chosen to deny the supernatural or rationalize it away. A rare few accept it for what it is and act. You are among those heroes and are destined for greatness or death. Welcome to Flames of Freedom, where your grim and perilous tale hangs in the balance. Welcome everyone to Flames of Freedom, Grim and Perilous RPG. Uh, we are settling in here, getting into the mood of 1776, which is filled with Hamilton references, hip hop, and some amazing cool revolution stuff. Uh, I am joined by the incredible, amazing cast here, and uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, we'll just go around. T.P. Grant, why don't you uh, start us off? Hi, I'm T.B. Grant. I'm thrilled to be back playing Vihander here on Encounter Roleplay. And uh, today I'm going to be playing Amos, a uh, uh, survivalist, getting to, getting to break into the uh, outdoorsman class. Brittany, be right. What you got? Hi, everyone. My name is Brittany, also known as Brittany B. Wright. It's Brittany the Protector. <laughs> I try to protect everybody. Uh, this is my first time playing, and my character's name is Cecile Estien. She is a road agent who's probably going to hide from the law, unless you are the law, because then I had to run to the other side room. Nicely. That's fair. Okay. And give it up for Draku, part of the Overwatch Pro ERP team. Uh, yeah, representing here. Uh, what you got? Oh, yeah. Between me and Brittany, we've got you covered for sure. <laughs> um, hey, everybody, I'm Draku. Uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere that Draku is the username, except for one place. And today I'm playing a young multicultural woman named Patience. And she is a dilettante, which I've heard is just basically a college student. So <laughs> here we go. You're in debt? What is this? The flaw is just like but... one million in debt. <laughs> I <know. laughs> but I already know everything about what I'm studying, obviously. So. Yeah, exactly. And she joins the revolution to wipe out her student loan debt. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yes, too too dark, me. too horrific. We can't handle it. Uh, <laughs> Colin, my man, Hi, how buddy. you doing? It's been too long. Yeah, I feel like something happened last time I saw you, but I can't remember what. It was like, yeah, death it was. Something like that. I wouldn't and say alleged it, death. Alleged? No. Okay. Yeah. So you want to say you want to play the game, Mitchell? Fine. Um, I, I do. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Colin at Colinomicon, and today I'm going to be playing uh, Phineas Rutt, 
a uh, real wet behind the ears uh, recruit uh, uh, working out the uh, militia profession. In this, uh, he's pretty damn hapless and um, really probably shouldn't be here because he lied about his age to join the army in the first place. How I mean, old is he? No, he he's eighteen. <laughs> okay, all right, that's fine enough for the for the army. We, we believe you. And he doesn't All have right. flat feet, so, so he's in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The bar was pretty low. Um, but yeah, so for those who don't know, we are playing Flames of Freedom, Grim and Perilous RPG, which is Wyhander's new game, which is currently out on Kickstarter. Um, a nice look into the Revolutionary War and all the going-ons that occurred during that time, uh, including the supernatural horror stuff that historians just gloss over. Um so we're really excited to bring that into the light, bring some attention to these very historical moments. Uh, and without further gilding the lily, we're going to hop into this amazing uh, world uh, and hopefully experience some horror along with it. So it is January 1776. You are a group of investigators working in league with the revolution. Just a week ago, you received a letter from Henry Jones, your mysterious rebel benefactor. One of his spies, Miriam, was last seen heading towards Boston, carrying an important object of power that the leaders in the besieged city needed. You must find out what happened to her. You've been dis dispatched to Trenton, New Jersey, in the middle of winter. Finding Miriam in Trenton should be easy. Easy. The village is small, and Miriam is a tall, red-haired woman of English and indigenous descent. During your travel to Trenton, you met a kindly old Quaker named Livingston Hobb, who walked the road with you and shared some friendly stories. You arrive at dusk, and an inviting warm light comes from the Fish and Fin Tavern, welcoming you to Trenton. It seems like a good of a place as any to start your investigations for the rebel spy. In any case, as we go around, why don't you describe what really matters, which is your player character, what their disposition is, and what their mood is. The light is just shining upon you. It's a lovely morning, though it is cold, um, and the warm smells of mutton can be kind of... You smell it in the air. It smells delicious, salted pepper, and maybe even some meat or beer. It's going to be delicious. We'll start off with you, uh, same same kind of way as we were before, uh, TP. So uh, Amos is a tall, well-built man uh, with tan skin from mostly being in the outdoors almost constantly, long black hair pulled back in a ponytail. He's wearing a beat-up blue uh, jacket from his time with Rogers Rangers during the Seven Years' War. He's got a musket very comfortably slung, uh, short barreled on his arm, carrying it very casual t casually. Walking into town, um, probably in the lead, as, as he's probably the one who's been keeping the closest eye on the road. Excellent. Brittany? All right, so when you see Cecily, I cannot talk today. I'm very sorry. Cecily, uh, I cannot talk. Uh, you see a uh, mature French woman. She has uh, intense hazel eyes, and she's wearing like a beat up jacket. Her her long hair is left loose, and behind her back is a muscatoon. On her side, you can there's a Duck, a duck-footed uh, pistol, and uh, she's she's kind of looking around, looking around like almost nervously a little bit. But then, like when she when she got in town, she relaxes. And uh, yeah, that's Cecily for you, Cecily. I cannot talk today. <laughs> it's fine. Words are hard. Uh, Draku, go ahead. Yes, so Patience is a young woman. Um, at first glance, you might get the hint that she and Amos are potentially related. Intent. 
Um, she's got long, uh, straight black hair, um, and some very bright green eyes. Um, and right now as she's walking along, she's kind of, I don't want to say disgusted, but she's done with this walk already. She's wearing a very fancy black dress, um, and a few layers on top, um, hidden am amongst those layers. She, uh, always keeps her handy, uh, flintlock pistol. Um, but she's very carefully tiptoeing around puddles of mud, um, trying to keep her outfit rather immaculate. And um, as they get nearer into the city, and as they get nearer to this uh, food source, she does perk up a little bit more, and is very excited to finally be off the road. Excellent. In our most patriotic Holland. Uh, Phineas is... Uh, a tall, lanky guy. I, I just, I'm really happy with how this worked out because I was going for basically like Carrot from Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett. And I got a <laughs> uh, randomly, randomly rolled uh, a tall, lanky guy with close cropped curly hair, bright blue eyes, and a winning smile. And uh, he's, he's, he's wearing this, uh, he's wearing this um, green jacket that he seems very proud of. Everything else on him uh, he, he, he looks like a farmhand, sort of. Everything else on him is dirty. Um, he doesn't seem to care for his appearance very much, but he keeps this green jacket of his immaculately kept. Uh, he has a big uh, brown bass musket slung across his back that he's very proud of and keeps very well maintained. And He's sort of trailing behind Amos like a... just kind of like a, like a puppy dog. Um, just keeping very, very close and almost like... Anyone paying attention would notice that he's even purposely uh, keeping in step with Amos as he walks, almost as if they're marching, but they're not. They're just in the street. But uh, he he wants to make sure that he's even lockstep with Amos as he goes, and he's uh, just observing his his movements very, very studiously as they walk along. And uh, the smell of some fresh food uh, certainly would uh, make this dumb little farm boy perk up a bit. So he's a he is bright and chipper right now. Excellent. So as you guys, like, obviously there was a rain that happened and due to the uh, winter, um, just kind of have these nice little frozen puddles uh, amidst the mud and the uh, horse uh, shite, uh, which is in this beautiful roadway that kind of gets muddled up into the sweet smells of the, the tavern, which is just across the street as you kind of walk into this uh, little town. Uh, on either side, you see uh, little buildings. Um, people are, are just kind of waking up or have already begun their day several hours before. Um, but it seems like a perfectly good day. And on that note, uh, a very... Um, you, you smell it before you see it. Um, a man uh, with hair that's kind of bristly under his neck and just kind of goes up into patches, um, somewhat dark-skinned, uh, with a huge puff of hair uh, that is uncombed, unkept, uh, kind of moves forward uh, to this amazingly dressed individual that he sees, uh, who, of course, is Dracu's character, uh, and then lays out uh, a little blanket, uh, white, with a little bit of what could be brown and red stains upon it, over uh, several um, water ice patches, um, in order to make your travel a little bit less dirty, wiping his hand over his nose. <laughs> uh, excuse me, miss. Uh, yes, um, I've cleared the way for you. Thank, thank you. And she just very gingerly steps as minimally as she can across this. Yeah. It, it's very weird because you, you you know that there was rain, but it's been frozen up. But this little cloth that he's laid out before is definitely more damp than it should be. As patience she, slides um, by, I think. Sorry. Yeah, she she's definitely <laughs> shooting a look at this guy and then just kind of side-eyes next to her, like, Amos, just... Do you, do you see this? Like... 
Amos is just glowering at this uh, individual, not saying anything, just sitting there with his with his um, short bow or musket kind of tucked under his arm, just standing there with kind of the mute promise of the musket. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, good morning, yeah? Can we help you? Oh, no, I uh, just just helping myself being uh, a nice and kindly neighbor, uh, helping this uh, fine creature here over the difficult travels on the way to the tavern, as it were. Uh, though if you could maybe spare a coin or two so that I might have a pint of something hot, refreshing, and preferably alcoholic, that would also be... Um, it's amazing. I would like it. Yes. <laughs> for my for my kind act, you see. <sighs> Amos is going to rummage around in his pocket and find a couple shavings of a pence that he has and just drop a few shavings of a mm. pence. Thank you. Are you dropping on the ground? No, I'll give it to him. I won't dro- I'm, I'm not going to be a dick about it. <laughs> Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll grab it, and uh, he, he reaches out for your hands as if to shake it. Does not offer the, the hand. Pool. <laughs> yeah. Again. Again. Yeah, I, I figured it isn't much. You're like, he, he smiles up at you, and you can tell, like, those little black marks inside of the tooth that suggest some form of growth or maybe cavity or something's going on there that is not right. Uh, his breath smells like a mix of lemon and then something foul. It's hard to tell exactly what that foulness is, but you would kind of relate it to a dead horse, maybe sitting outside the desert for several days. Um, yeah, it's it's not. It's, it's very kind of... It almost wakes you up like a slap in the face. <sighs> Private. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is very good. Uh, I can lead you and introduce you to the folks in the tavern. Uh, otherwise, I would probably be on my way. Um, maybe get uh, a soup or something hot and alcoholic. As he was private, saying that, Amos said private. Point. So the minute you said private, yeah. I snapped to attention at the other side. <laughs> yes, Sajin. <laughs> Why don't you take point on following this gentleman on into the tavern is he a danger sergeant no go with oh, him. no just, no just go. <laughs> you want like a handkerchief As or Amos... something pal uh, no, i can't sicily? Buy. I'm buying. sicily speaks up and walks over to phineas and goes darling he's a uh in france we called him a uh what did we call it He's a wino, so uh, just go to Ah, him. yeah. Yes, he is a wino, darling. Just it's a, it's a, I feel like it's a little rude. I mean, he's, he's standing right there. Yeah, it was I, kind of hurtful, I, if I have to be honest. Um, I'm very hurt sorry. Uh, Cicely turned his head, well, I'm very sorry, darling. Sometimes I just like saying how I feel, and I'm very sorry to hurt your feelings. Very, very mm. sorry. Uh, Phineas, go on now. And she gives uh, a nice manner. Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, come with me, uh, f- friend. I think you're coming with me, right? I know the place. Um, <laughs> I have yeah, the money. Yeah, of course. Um, Come on, friend. Let's go on to the, the tavern. It's going to be nice, efficient he- tavern. He walks away with this guy, and he's like looking back at Amos the whole time. Like, am I, am I, am I doing this right? What, what am I supposed to be doing? It's like, Just... Dad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. And he'll he'll take you over to the uh, the nice tavern. Um, it, it has like this little uh, fin of some sort of fish. Uh, probably at one point in time, there was a bit more of the fish than just the fin. Uh, you see several chains kind of hanging down, uh, but what was is no longer anymore, and there is just the fin 
left on this place known as a fish and tavern. You see through the windows that people are enjoying uh, this day with um, quiet contemplation. There's kind of like that nice murmuring sound that's uh, kind of really like this white noise in the background right now. No one's really engaging in any enthusiastic conversations. People do have soup, it looks like, little bowls. Um, as this man soup, opens the door and, oh yeah, looks around and... Oh. Okay, uh, I can't really... I don't want to be seen with you. You're too uptight. <coughs> and he kind of walks off that, to the... the well, that was being a bit rude. This fucking guy. <laughs> People kind I mean, of turn let to him you. Go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They turn to you and just kind of go back to their soup. You hear like the the nice wooden spoons banging against the bowls. As they turn, Phineas would do one of those standard kind of sort of "I'm not a threat, go about your business" type of thing. Yeah. And they do. And then since no one seems to linger. And then since Amos left me in charge of this guy, but then he just wandered off. I mean, I guess I got time to kill. So I think Phineas wants to get a Laga. Yeah, you want a Laga? I want a Laga. Yeah. You want a Laga? All right, cool. <laughs> uh <clears throat> Do you want anything with that? The the bartender uh is this old grizzly Soup. man. Oh, soup. Excellent. Well, the soup of the day is um, really a bit of meat found throughout the village, um, marinated in a sort of broth left over from last week uh, with some peas in it. That's That actually all sounded pretty appealing, but you started it by saying it's just meat found around the village? Yeah, it's like what kind of... Are tough. Uh, well, there's a cat. Um, someone's horse died the other day, so we went ahead and put that in. Um, let's just yeah, say it's good sure. enough for anyone, right? If you're if you're gonna eat from a wooden bowl, you, you're gonna. You, I don't want to go into the details, but you came into this fine, lovely establishment. You order yourself a lager, um, and it's gonna pair very well with the soup. I mean, hey, look, I, I've been uh, I've been sleeping rough in the fields for months now, you know, fighting the cause of freedom and whatnot, so I think I can handle a little bit oh, more yeah. cancer. How's that going for you? Huh? Yeah, winning the uh, day, uh, so to speak. Well, you heard about uh, you heard about Fort Ticonderoga. Nah, I didn't. What was going on over there? Oh. Well, it was it. Well, the, the well, okay. Well, I guess I got to start from square one. Uh, the uh, uh, well, let's not the start British... with square one. Maybe uh, you start with square two or three or four. But uh, you know, I, I got customers to serve. All right. Well, starting on square four, the British had it, and now they don't. And uh, I was there, so oh, we took it. Hey, congratulate! You hear that, people? We have uh, we have a hero. People don't. I was uh, I was also it. injured. I was also injured in the battle. So uh, purple hat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, where, where, how'd you get injured? I don't like to talk about it. It's sort of, uh, sort of traumatic, you know. Ah, you lose something important to you, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah, something sensitive. <clears throat> yeah. Well, my dignity. Hey, yep. Cheers to you. <clears throat> you know what? This lager, it's on me. Hey, you know what? For freedom, to you. For freedom and to me. Both things are equally important. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Hey. Hey. Yeah. I like. I, I like Jersey. I didn't think I'd like Jersey, but I like Jersey so far. This is all right. Hey, Jersey gets a bad rap sometimes, but uh, honestly, we're casual. It's a good place hey. here. Yeah. I mean, I hear everything's legal here. Uh, don't test that. All right. All right. I'll just enjoy my log of hey, Thanks. Mm -hmm. Oh, and hey, look, if you see a fella come through that door uh, with, like, tight black hair pulled back with a blue jacket, could you just, like, give me a wink or something so I... I could probably so I wave at you or maybe call your name. What, what's your name, sir? Oh, Phineas. Phineas <laughs> Rutt. Uh, very good to meet you. Mr. Officer Rutt? Uh, Lieutenant Pri Rutt? Private, we... private, private Rutt. Private Rutt. All right. Well, private, I will make sure when you're... 
Commander to B comes in here, I will make sure that uh, you you are you are known. Ah, well, I'm already known. Hey, you ever heard of the town of uh, Rutland, Vermont, named after my family? No, I don't. It's not. It's totally not. <laughs> In New Jersey, we just kind of stick to ourselves, you know. There's lots of things going on right now, so uh, hey. Yeah, whole lot to worry about. But hey, it's it's. I, I appreciate the hospitality. I wasn't expecting this down here in Jersey, and I gotta say, I'm very, I'm very appreciative of what you're doing. Okay, no, it's uh, there's gotta be a nice place for people like you to hang their hats, huh? And get a little drunk, maybe uh, meet some people. <laughs> hey, you know it's a good idea. Hey, you should uh, yeah, hang this up for a bit. It's been been walking for so long. Hey, it's all sweaty. All right. Yeah, it, it gets some stink in here. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and sit down. I'll, I'll let you know when they get in here. All right. All right. Thank you. All right, what's everyone else doing? I think uh, Amos, after after uh, the private walked away, would have would have gone to check on his cousin and leaned into patience and say, "Well, we need to remember why we came here. Are you hungry? Should we go get something to eat? I'm sure that idiot's already getting a drink or something." Food sounds amazing right now. Yes. Is is everyone in New Jersey that sniffly? Yes. Okay. We are sorry, New Jersey. <laughs> we should um uh we should be careful. Uh if if rebel agents are disappearing, we are all should be very mindful. So be careful going in there and be sure not to you're not sure to be too obvious with why we have come here. But right. Right. Don't be careful, Cotton. Hello, Amos. Doesn't believe you at all. <laughs> but, uh turns to Cecile and says, uh hungry? Why yes, I am quite hungry. And people in uh New Jersey, is it are they always like this? All the time. But come let us go before that idiot gets too drunk. That uh, I agree with. So we're right, going so to who's, uh, proceed over. Yeah. He, he's already drunk, probably. <laughs> oh, oh, God. He's a lightweight. 85 proof foggers. <laughs> oh, shit. Marty! Marty! Yeah, so the moment you step in, um, uh, officer, uh, you see the, the bartender kind of waddle up to you uh hey pardon me are you uh the officer sir officer no no um though that one and he you know, kind of like nods towards the bar is technically my responsibility hmm. well i'm at your service sir if you need anything let me know it's been a long day on the road. It was quite cold. Could we get some seats by a fire and some food? Yeah, we can get some seats by the fire. Yeah, sure. And he, he'll waddle over and kind of shoo some of the other patrons away from the fireplace. Kind of wipe out the table a little bit, flinging the, the bits of whatever bone meat that's on the table onto the floor and pats the little wooden stools. At your leisure and pleasure, sir. Thank you. Sits down and kind of gives like patience just the slightest little elbow nudge of like a all right, do your thing. Um yes, uh sir, we are um looking for some of our friends we were supposed to meet here. Mm -hmm. Um 
have you seen a tall, red-headed woman? <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> okay, that got a flat. Uh, no, no one's laughing. It's just like no one here is. Uh, uh, do you know the individual's name or anything like that? Get zero in on this person. Maybe I heard it. Something about it. And she kind of glances at Amos, like, should I, should I say, like? It's uh, just a short little Miriam? nod. Miriam. Miriam's her name. Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, yeah, Mary. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna have a drink or two. See if it jogged my memory. Uh, and I'll get back to you. Is that okay? Uh, what's your name again? Patience. <laughs> well, we all need a little patience, right? Okay, tough crap. Yes, tough crap. I've never heard yeah. that one before. And she kind of goes to her seat <laughs> and just goes ahead and sits down and kind of dusts herself off. <laughs> yeah, he walks away, slumped shoulders. Uh, grabs a logger and is just kind of looking through uh, this book turning the pages quickly as he does can I go grab the private by the scruff of his jacket and just drag him over to where we're sitting I was going to yes. do that you yes. go ahead <laughs> just come as over you and grab just... him it's as you grab him, it's yeah. mid raise a glass to freedom. Oh! <laughs> <sighs> Just plops uh, him down in a chair next to the patients. Uh, sorry, Sag. Well, hey. we shouldn't be here any longer than we need to, but. We need to find It's a nice place. Yeah. Very friendly. Mm. Were you able to find anything out, Private? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I was doing some reconnaissance over at the bar and um, found that the lager is great. The soup is... And the company, oh god, I mean, fantastic! It's just, uh, really nice. Well, are you asking about something specific, Sergeant? The woman we're supposed to meet here, Miriam. Remember her? No. Oh, okay. I feel like uh, I'm forgetting no. something, though. Uh. <laughs> Phineas, you stay here, and I will go and talk to the nice man, okay? Just eat, eat your soup, and I'll be right oh, back. Oh, I've already had three bowls. I'm stuffed, but hey, thank you. Oh, yeah, and it's delicious, too. You know, it's very nicely salted. Probably a little bit too much salt, but hey, it's nice Oh, nutrients. it covers up the cat flavor, though. Exactly, and it pairs nicely with the lager. Uh, uh, Sam Adams lager. Um, wow. and yeah, you got those nice chunky beets, bits of meat that are just like, oh, so good. It's almost like lamb chops so at the right end of the bone. It is delicious to suck on. And man, the broth itself is a nice bit of parsley, uh, mixed in. And is that the hint of lemon you taste? Mm. I think it is. Ah, uh, citrus flavor. Lovely. <laughs> So Cecile goes up to the bar and she sits down and goes, Barkeep. Yeah. yeah. Well, Hi. well, well, yeah. ain't first off, you look amazing. You uh Thank nice you. breath of fresh air. You and the other um the lady over there, both both of you, um it's like uh, it's like having flowers in the the tavern. You know, it's always filled with these these musky men traveling up and down north to south, uh, coming in with their stinky boots. They haven't showered in days. Oh, 
God, it's nice. dreadful. Isn't it? Yes, very dreadful. Um, do you have anything to drink around here? Hmm. We have this Boston lager, basically, and something like that. I would like to have a pint. And I was wondering, hmm. have you seen a friend of ours? Uh, Miriam? You know what? Your friend asked me the same question. And I will I tell you what I told her. I have not seen a, um, a redhead uh, in, in quite some time. Uh, maybe about like uh, two weeks ago, maybe I saw him. A redhead, that is. Who's to say it's yours? Um, I don't know if you have claim to most of the redheads or just some of them or just this specific one. Um, but yeah. I see. Uh, and you say the soup is uh, pretty. And is the soup here pretty good? Mm, yeah, it will. It will give any um, uh, person who has lots of money uh, a run for their said money. It's lovely. Uh, picked up from the wonderful harvested cows in the area of New Jersey. Um, amazing stuff. And then nicely salted, marinated in lager, uh, and then put into a beef broth. Uh, we also have bread, which you may purchase on the side here. Uh, I am a fan of dipping it in and really just letting it suck into the bread and then taking a bite out of it. Hmm. And uh, she she ponders this for a moment, and then she she goes back to the information when he's like he's seen the redhead two weeks ago. So she kind of smiles, but her teeth is just crooked as who didn't work for. She said, "All right, go to crap." Uh, you had not seen our friend in two weeks. When was the last time you saw her? Oh, you mean my my friend? What? Uh, it's just someone I saw. Uh, a redhead. A redhead was here. Like, yeah, I don't know what more is there to ask for that. You might ask around these fine folks who are enjoying their their uh, their meals here. I mean, it's because I'm the barkeeper. I mean, I know things. You know, I I really like to keep my head down. She sighs and goes, "All right, thank you." I she takes it and pays you like, "Thank you," and just goes back to everyone and be like, "Well, I got some information." Apparently, there was a red head in here two weeks ago. Problem is, I have to, we have to ask the stinky men here that don't take showers or baths. Oh, uh, problem is, that was two weeks ago and we're here now. So, what's the deal? Yeah, a uh, player to GM question How does the two weeks mm -hmm. time frame align to what we were told? Um, is, it, is it equivalent? So... About, yeah. So it, okay. it's theoretically possible that she was here during that time and maybe even before that. Mm -hmm. I agree. Two weeks is a is a significantly... It's a cold trail. We should... Yes. Just kind of uncomfortably looks around a crowded room of people and just... We should probably talk to a few of the people here. Can I? It... Yes, yes, please. Yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, I'm making friends here, Sergeant. I mean, I, I think I've already. I, I think I'm like. In, I'm endearing some. I'm engendering some real goodwill here between the people of uh, the Northeast and the slightly more Southern Northeast. You've been a great asset to the cause this day. But hey, hey, Sergeant, if anyone can track it, right, it's you. You're a fucking fantastic tracker. Pardon my language. Yes, uh, two weeks is quite quite the time. Um, I think we're going to need more along the lines of leads and turn turn to patients. Say, I know the road was quite hard on you, but uh, I think you and the private and our French friend here are more equipped for this and just kind of looks around environment than myself. I think we got it, Sergeant. Yep. I think I can give it a go. 
All right, what's the game plan? How do we, uh, you want to like divide the room? I go left, you go right. Uh, and then, and then yeah. Cecile goes down the center. Yeah, we can divide the room. Patience, what do you think? Should we divide the room or just converge all together and go to one table at a time? It might be nice to have someone watch their reactions. Ah, ah all right. Ooh. Smart. Fucking smart. All right. Uh, uh, hey, you know, I, I already know these people. I think I've really kind of like, uh, basically gone native around Trenton already. So, uh, how about I just, uh, how about I stick by you, patients? And then I'll just like keep a clean eye to make sure that they're not, you know, bullshitting us or anything like that. Yeah. Sure. That. Okay. Yes. That that sounds agreeable. I think we can make that All right. happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, patients. Who are you going right. up to first? And how do you approach? Um, I guess I would approach the nearest table. Um, just whoever was closest Excellent. to us. Um, and right before you uh, is a blonde-haired gentleman with uh, majestic blue eyes uh, gazing down at his soup, uh, trying desperately to kind of get that last bit of meat at the bottom of the soup, uh, but is having difficulty because a spoon is not really the right utensil for this job. Um, you can see kind of from his backside that uh, he has two pistols on either side of his hips, um, he is not well-dressed, kind of tattered of clothing that probably looked good during its day, but he does have a nice floral scent about him, um, as you approach. Sir, sir, pardon me. And she kind of, like, taps the table to get his attention. Ah. He, uh, Phineas looks is hanging, up hanging back, hanging back, observing. Mademoiselle, and, uh, uh, how may I help you? Um, yes, we are looking for one of our friends. Uh, she's supposed to meet us here. Have you seen a red-headed woman named Miriam? Miriam, Miriam. Uh, well, take a seat, why don't you? And, uh, we can ponder this together. Um, he kind of takes a, a handkerchief out of his pocket and moves the dirt off from one of the wooden stools. Uh, can I get you a drink? Um, I'll try. Uh, no, thank you. I'm fine. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Um, I guess I'm drinking alone. That's fine. Um, so you're looking for a redhead? Um, most likely came yes, by yes. here a couple. Yes, we've we've uh, heard that from the barkeep, but I was hoping you might have more information. Uh, well, um, uh, the last couple of weeks there has been a certain um, mainstay here at the. Uh, at Trenton, a woman uh, who collects herbs uh, on the outside, kind of during the mornings, right when the mist is rolling up uh, from the waters. Um, I, I believe her. Her hair might have been red. I do believe people have compared it to the setting of the sun, a sort of vibrant red and orange that uh, kind of captures the poet's imagination. That sounds like that might be our woman. Thank you for your time. And she like digs in her purse and like slides. Uh, no, no, please. Uh, Mademoiselle, um, I would provide it just for the asking. I don't need any form of coin, uh, but I do appreciate it. Um, just hey, uh, Mitch, can I scrutinize mm -hmm. him from? Heck yeah, the you can. 
Okay. Go ahead and le roll. I think I am le bad at this. Yeah, I'm pretty bad at this. Uh... <laughs> oh, no. Yep, that's a fail. First one of the night. Get them rolling. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Number to beat there was a 42, a... and I got a 61. There is a slight spark in his eyes, which do suggest that maybe he is a little bit more interested than what Patience is kind of uh, responding to. So maybe she's missing something in this regard. Hmm. And I get no, that even with failing. Interesting. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got if that you, because you, you failed. I see. <laughs> If, if you won't accept this for your information, please accept it for your discretion. Yeah, sure. Um, I do want a second cup of soup, so uh, sure. I will take uh, the offerings you've brought before me. Thank you. And she kind of and your, stands up. And... Your name. Oh, uh, Patience. Lovely, lovely name. Isn't that um, one of the... Uh, it's biblical in some sense, yes? Uh, yes. yes. Are you a biblical, God-fearing woman? Of course. My parents made sure of that. Well, just checking in. Um, please uh, go about your way. If you need anything else, please don't hesitate to come back and discuss with me. Thank you. If I think of anything, I will. You have a good day, Patience. She does a slight curtsy and kind of backs away towards uh, Phineas. I don't know. I think there's something else there. He's... He looked awfully intrigued. I don't know, like he was waiting for you to say something. I, I don't know. It's, I don't think he got the whole story is what I'm saying. Hmm. We can come back to him later. Should we check other tables as well? I think we should if oh, that's nice one. Uh, hi, I was here the whole entire time. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was. Uh, I, I, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't notice. I was uh, being incognito. I, I know you're. You're doing good at being in incognito, but uh, I was silent the whole too time. Too good. Uh, too quiet. I know you were too good. Uh, in he something about him. I don't know. Let's come back to him later and go to another table. Yeah. Yeah. I'll hang back. I'll keep Would a watchful eye. Don't you worry. Madame Cecile? Um, what'd you ask me? I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you trust him? His information? Mm, as far as I can throw him? No. Yeah. And with that, boom! The doors fly open. The cold air drifting into uh, the tavern. Everyone turns their head as quickly as possible to this disheveled-looking individual uh, grabbing onto his stomach, maybe some sort of wound or something. His hair is kind of lanky and long, filled with bits of twigs and leaves. He coughs and gets down on his knees. Help me! I... It was attacks. My sons, Charlie and, and, and Jack, they're missing. I, I, I can't. I need help. Please, God. Amos She's like is looking awesome. around desperately for a hero. Sorry, go uh, ahead. Amos is on his feet and uh, is coming over to check the wound. Uh, yeah, just, looking out. Uh, yeah, just from kind of like looking over, just uh, a quick look, unless you want to make a roll real quick. Uh, it doesn't seem to be any blood, um, but the way he moves definitely suggests that there's something painful uh, there. Uh, could, can I make a heel check to see what? Yes, that the would be perfect. Of it? All right. Mm -hmm. You get a uh, plus 10% uh, just because he's like, he's not, it is pretty easy for this. Uh, I'm looking for a 47. Uh, 79, so that's a nope. <laughs> oh my god. You guys do have the coins. 
uh, down below that you can use, but that's fair. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it's it's hard to tell. Uh, he might be eternally bleeding. It's just like you can think of a thousand web MD results for this sort of uh, inquiry, and none of them are good. Um, as he kind of grabs onto you as if you were like the anchor in the ocean storm. <sighs> So what, I, what attacked you? What happened? I our our carriage broke down. I I told my sons to stay in the carriage to 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 relax to to wait here, and I will go forward into town and and acquire some things to 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 fix it. And I heard howls in the distance, and and I ran back, and there was. St- utter destruction. I couldn't find my boys. I, I tripped trying to, to search for them through the woods. I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know what I would do without Charlie and Jack. Private? Yeah, tell me. On me? Yes, yeah, Sergeant. Cecile, if you wish. Patience. And he's in like a very, very like paternal way that on some level he knows in no way is going to be followed. Stay here. <laughs> As uh, yes, Sergeant. head out the door. Patience gives it like two or three beats, nudges <laughs> Cecile, and immediately starts following. <laughs> Phineas stays no. stock still because he was just ordered not to leave, <laughs> and no, he he's like the two of you come with. He was telling. He was telling patients to stay here. Oh, sp- oh, I see. I misunderstood. Oh. Okay. That I, yeah. Then I would Sorry, use that. Sorry, I wasn't clear. He said, like, you know, on me, and then just patients. Stay here. <sighs> um, which, di- <laughs> which direction was the carriage? Down, uh, headed north. Uh, I, 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 I can, I, uh, I'll come with you. I... Oh man, uh, my, my name is Calvin Stowe, uh, by the way, my, my, my sons, Charlie and Jack, I need to give them back, the, the mother would be furious, I, oh god, I, 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 he just like, he's continually like just grabbing at you as if, you know, you were like a parent to him, just kind of holding you close to him. Uh, and and some genuine. of the, I mean, this is like genuine panic at the moment. Oh, why don't you go ahead and make me a scrutinize? Ooh. All right, I'm looking for a 49. Are That's we gonna a get 35. a good roll? Ooh, yeah. there we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, he he's definitely in a panic. Um, so it definitely feels sincere. Uh, maybe uh, some guilt wrapped up into it. Uh, what that comes from is hard to kind of pegged down but then again he's a father who lost his kids um everyone else in the taverns like coming out leaving patients like by herself uh in the tavern uh as people are like getting (laughs) torches and everything getting ready to strike out uh for the day to assist this person so we're heading uh the so it was cut the carriage is coming north so we're heading south and uh, it's currently me, the private, and uh, Cecile. So, uh, yeah, with and patients, the rest of the tavern. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're all yeah, coming patients. Too? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. It seems like I'm every able bodied person. Yeah, I'm definitely coming along. But like I said, I'm giving it like a few beats. So it's not yeah. obvious, but she's coming along. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Right. Uh, so yeah, as you guys are walking, he kind of gains uh, a little bit of control uh, concerning himself. He's still grabbing onto that wound to the side uh, of his stomach, uh, kind of around the rib cage area. Um, as people start moving uh, south towards, uh, just kind of following the road where the the chariot would be. Um, I'm going to, if at all possible, try to disengage from this fellow and move off the road into, the, like, just the low brush as we're generally moving. 
All right, yeah, he kind of um, <laughs> just kind of lingers on someone else, his hands like grabbing onto their shoulders. Uh, that person kind of gives you a what the fuck look, but hey, <laughs> you're free at least. Uh, I, I have to go. I, Phineas says to the gentleman, I, I have to go follow him, so uh, you have to cling on to somebody else for a little bit. But, and uh, <laughs> Phineas, big lanky Phineas, comes bounding into like underbrush after Amos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what up, Sergeant? Gathing look and just private. You fan out to the other side of the road. Right, we talked about this. We you got it. You got this. it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All up here. All up here. All right. And he runs Private. to the other side. Oh, yeah. yeah. Private. He's just going to point at your musket. You're half cocked. Oh. Uh. Shit. Uh, That's embarrassing. <laughs> tries to not make joke. Nearly fails. <laughs> uh. <laughs> At least we weren't inappropriate. That's always good. <laughs> yeah, that's all that really counts. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Uh, fix bayonets? Oh, uh, 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 no. Just go get in formation. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he runs across the road and is, like, walking in the brush on the other side of the road, kind of, like, musket up, looking over at Amos, like, every 30 seconds or so. Am I, do am I doing good? <laughs> You're doing great, buddy. <laughs> and it's like, you know, it, it's it's still daytime, right? And But, like, there's this thick morning fog that just kind of obscures the light and makes the sun just look like this orb in the sky that doesn't even, like, hurt your eyes when you look at it. Everywhere you look, you can almost imagine little things traveling about the underbrush, scurrying about just at the edge of your peripheral or your sight. <laughs> is this old man, is this man on me now? The one who's like clinging yes. on to? Me? I'm going to say yes. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, his hands are just all like. Oh, murder. <laughs> murder, murder, murder. <laughs> Uh, I, I, uh, Cecile turns to him and go, don't worry, we will get your children back. Just, just, um, uh, oh, bugger, what do I want to do? She, uh, pulls out, I guess she pulls out some pence and give them, give it to him, be like, go get us the bank. We will bring your children back. I promise. What? I, I, thing. I, I need to be a part of it, though. I, I, I'm of use of some what, sort. Whatever it is, is out there, you might get, you might be in the way, and then I cannot save you. So please, uh, go. We'll bring them back. I promise. There's nothing like yell at us later, but we will bring them back. Uh, don't why don't you make a check uh, for that <laughs> oh boy well, oh boy my first roll oh boy okay uh... oh boy uh i'm gonna give you a minus <laughs> 10 because those are this is kids yeah uh i i have a, a 82 which is bad i think oh uh, like you rolled 82 yeah, I actually, yeah, I rolled 82, then, like, you said negative 10, mm -hmm. so 72, right? Or, no. It, it changes oh, no. your your chance. Uh, so, um... Ow! It's bad. <laughs> it's bad, isn't it? He just, man, yeah. is just gonna come with me, isn't he? No, you're, he's yours now, uh, basically, <sighs> So I gotta deal with the man child. Okay. Mm -hmm. She says, goes, all right, but you hide somewhere. You make sure you hide and you do not make any sound or noise until I say it's over. Okay? Okay. <laughs> I just want my boys. Okay. <laughs> we will get your 
boy's back, I promise. Okay. I do. That sounds fair. I, I am not a liar. Uh, I am you feel your lying. shoulder. Your shoulder is getting a little damp from his oh. his tears. Oh, oh. oh boy! Oh mother, mother! She just kind of awkwardly pats his head, like, "Okay, understandable." There, there. Okay. They're there. Okay. Uh, uh, can you let me go? I I have to do some. I have to find things. Okay. Let 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 me go. Nicely, please, please. <laughs> Please, please. I don't, I don't like that. What, I, what is this? I, um, but... Please. <laughs> and she's like... Please. Like, very nicely. Like, let's go. Please. Please. Very nicely. I'm yeah, if you, if you keep slapping him, he'll go off like, to someone okay. else. <laughs> oh. But yeah, as you guys are approaching, you, you notice that there's this carriage kind of uh, wedge in what looks like a, a bit of a cre crevice in the dirt road, a little bit of the water frozen over the wagon wheel, um, and one of the uh, wooded beams within the, the wagon wheel is split, so there's less pressure that can be uh, placed upon it. Um, so it looks slightly broken, but the, the thing that kind of gets your attention the most, especially the two who are kind of flanking around it, um, is that the door is open and there is a little bit of kind of like these rough patches as if something was moved through and then kind of let out into the forest. Um, but there's nothing um, in the carriage itself. The the walk here, mm -hmm. uh, was it long enough that so the water around the wheels is frozen right you said it's in like some yeah it's in some water that's frozen was the walk here long enough for water to freeze um it de something weird it it's definitely been here a while you can almost make the assumption that uh just kind of because of his disheveled look that he, he it took him a while to get to the town yeah. um so yeah uh, Amos is going to circle, just checking the ground to try to determine what it all happened here through seeing. Was it some sort of ambush? Maybe who was it? Uh, what sort of thing happened? Excellent. All right, go ahead and make a survival check. All right, I'm looking for 59 on this one. That's a 96. I would like to use a coin to re-roll that, please. <laughs> That's fair. Good use of a coin. What'd you get? Oh, 75 on the second time through, so it's not meant to be. <laughs> You're college, uh, I'm impressed. I, C'est la vie! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, looking around, it's just very hard to decipher what happened. You do realize it. It looks like there are two trails leading out from the the carriage. They're, they're pretty obvious because of just kind of broken twigs and stuff like that. But you don't know, like, what the cause of it was. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and say that, that Amos is getting irritated with all the people moving about the carriage. It's starting to disrupt everything. And <laughs> yeah, you're, like, bending thing. over, looking over <laughs> a dirt spot, and, like, someone walks over, like, hey... Let me look. Let me look at that. And she starts touching it. Private. What does the carriage look like? Broken, Sergeant. Thank you, Private. <laughs> <laughs> I think at that point, Amos is just going to turn into the crowd and only like half look and just say, "Patience. It's good to see you." Hi. Sergeant, you patience just is here. Leave me there. Yeah. Oh, you already. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Private. Welcome, Sergeant. Let's go take a look at the nature of the damage to the carriage, maybe. I'll give it a look. Staring right at Phineas. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what I did wrong here. <laughs> Um, yeah, so can I also check out the carriage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. let him, let him okay. And you said, what What kind of role was that? Survival. Survival. 
Okay. After all, under second 40. <laughs> 86. Nope. Woo! Uh, yeah, that, that, it, it's broken. It's definitely broken. Mm. Like a true mechanic. Mm. Can I try to see what's happening with the, uh, um, so I guess I have to get a 35, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I got a, I got a, I got a 97. That, that, it, 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 broken. I don't know how it happened, when, but it broke. When Mitch was, when Mitch was planning on GMing this, he didn't account for what would happen if we failed literally every fucking roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just Everyone, <laughs> There should the always be something written in the adventure. If they fail all roles, just have them move on. And it's just yeah, that for them. That carriage broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so with the uh, attention of four investigators who are very much... Uh, Hey, I haven't actually tried. With... I'm still gonna roll. I haven't actually tried yet. Oh, that's but... true. All <laughs> right. Well, I I know you're gonna just fail. So. This is your chance. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Come on, go this is my big one. This okay, I'm gonna say, it. Phineas, Phineas walks away from the carriage and then is like, I he has a moment of self awareness of like, I think maybe I'm not sure, but I think maybe the sergeant was mad with me a little bit there. So perhaps what I should do is turn around and look a little closer at the carriage. So yeah. he's going to look super close, wicked close, at the carriage. Uh, there is one Hamilton reference that I feel should, is perfect for this 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 moment. Oh. What is it? Phineas, don't raise your shot. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. I think it was a little something plan. like that, yeah. <laughs> Basically the, the whole play. Yeah. There you go. Go okay. ahead. So Phineas, electing to not throw away his shot, is gonna roll survival. Uh hold on, I have to see what my actual bonus is for that, so God, I hope that's Oh, survival's a perception skill. Okay, okay. I might not be terrible up at this. I got a 23. I actually got it. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. With the, with the mental acuity of uh, one of the most famous detectives written down uh, throughout the historical text, gazing upon the road, a the visage of what occurred starts to run rampant through your very creative and intellectual mind, as you almost can tell that uh, someone ran off uh, in a hurry, panicked and screaming, while two other small light humanoids were dragged off uh, via the other direction. By what? It is hard to tell. So, attack by, does it seem like a large number of people? Uh, no. It seems like one individual who dragged both uh, the small humanoids away. Okay, but you said there was two trails? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Come one so... one trail, uh, kind of looking at the carriage, the one to your right is a two dragged uh, small object, and the one to the left is someone just running. Oh. And is that that one just running, is that accounted for? In terms of, like, is that the way the dad went or something? Or is that... We don't know. Just he hasn't that. said anything. Yeah, but he, he mm. hasn't said anything, so it's up to your interpretation. Sergeant! Sergeant, I think I got something. Look private. All right. All right. No, no hear me out. Hear me out. Okay, you see? Right there. There's there's some footprints, but you see how you see how there's like in the dirt, they're kind of dragged. 
like they like the person wasn't really walking, like they were being pulled along, like dragging heels, okay? And then right there in the woods, all those twigs are, are cracked. So it, but they're too wide. That's too wide for one person. See, that's that that you can't that couldn't be just one person. I think that's multiple. I think what happened here is this area was attacked, knocked over, and then those two boys were dragged off that way along that path. Couldn't have been that one, because that's just the path one guy running. That might have been the old guy. We'll have to work into that, but but yeah, hey, 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 what do you what do you think, huh? I'm getting it. Mm -hmm. At the start of it, Amos was only half paying attention and just one of those like private let me let God damn it, Phineas, you're right. <laughs> At your but service, Tadget. That I think we need to start heading off after these drag marks. Yeah, yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. Well, go collect the seal. I'm fully and... cocked now, by the way. That's excellent. <laughs> um, just, and just like points the barrel of the muzzle up gently as you say that. Uh, <laughs> I'll collect the seal and I'll grab patience because she'll come anyway. And let's get going. Yeah. So the the group of individuals, uh, the people of the tavern, like they're, they're kind of following you. But it looks like as you guys are walking, following this path, that two distinct groups or cliques uh, have divided themselves up. You guys, uh, as well as as Calvin, uh, and then everyone else uh, who seems to be relying upon each other. Some um, amazing. Um, they look like they've known each other for a while and they've worked together and they're doing so in perfect harmony, encouraging and uh, uplifting each other. It's quite marvelous to see. Um, but the further you get into the forest, the more distant the two groups become. Uh, as you guys are kind of following around the tracks, they take various different pathways and such. Um, yeah. But it's really cold. Like you're, you're trudging through at least an inch of snow. Amos would like to find patience at some point and mm -hmm. just say, cousin, when we find these things, if shooting starts, I want you to get down and behind something. Move away from the shooting. When it's done, I will find you. Right. Stand up and wave my arms around. Head towards the noises. Yes. I've got it, cousin. I suppose I asked. And she for that, just kind of gives that smile. <laughs> like, you know, she's being very sarcastic, but. Yeah. And she kind of pats right. kind of on her dress. And I've, I've got my pistol. If it comes down to it, I remember what you taught me. But yes, I just, will hide. Just keep the private in front of you so he doesn't actually then at least shoot you. I hadn't considered that, but yes, that's probably for the better. Okay. One of those uh, boys' names was Am Charlie, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll just say while you're Charlie, having that conversation. Guys. Well while you guys well 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 um Amos and uh and Patience are talking, all the while Phineas is walking ahead, rifle at the ready, just going, Charlie! 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 Private. Yeah? If you continue to make that much noise, I will shoot you myself. Noted, Sergeant. Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> Jack and Charlie. Jack and Charlie. <laughs> Um, is the, um, boy's father with me again? Because apparently yeah. I'm going to be his... Yeah, he, he's not, he, he's not hanging on to you like he was before. He seemed to have gained a little mm -hmm. bit of confidence, uh, able to walk by himself for the most part. Uh, Cecile turns to him and I, and she says, uh, now, 
When bees go, when I shoot things, can you please hide? We. Oh yeah, no, from... no, I'm, I'm already oh. there. Yeah, no. Oh god, yeah. I, uh... I don't huh. want their fa their children. To, I don't want your two children to come back to a father not there. Trust me. And she smiles a little bit, and she kind of shows off her crooked teeth a little bit. But yeah, just. Is something wrong? You're so ah, it's very... just a nice smile, I guess. Um... Oh, I've been in so many fights. Unfortunately, they couldn't fix my mouth. I, I, I'm stuck with it for the rest of my life, unfortunately. So basically, the next amount I ever make, I gotta deal with my crooked teeth. I think that no matter what happens i think if you get married you should find someone who accepts you for who you are and the beauty that the scars have created thank you so no uh problem. let's go <laughs> he'll come uh, he'll continue to walk on uh and who's out in front who's the uh, who's the brave cannon fodder uh Amos will be out in front, but he will be taking it very slow and very stealthily. Can I just very ask, though, so if you're out in front, are you in front of me? I'm Who off to the side. Want? Thank you. We're, we're fanning <laughs> out again. You got to form that picket line, <laughs> Private. I mean, don't think I, I, I'll, I'll Dick Cheney you. Don't think I won't. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reference. Uh, definitely taking it stealthily. Yeah. So. <laughs> you you notice uh, kind of uh, you well you hear it first and then you see it this little uh, four legged creature kind of running towards you the the snow kind of bucking up after it it leaps from from spot to spot uh, running right towards you you have ten wonder... seconds to react oh it sees me yeah it seems to okay. Uh, I'm oh. going to draw my bow and fire. All right, go ahead and roll. All right. Uh, oops. Would this be considered a combat action? Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, then I'm going to pause for half a second and take aim. Just as I knock my bow and I pull it back, I'm going to pause for half a second and take aim. And that is a 17. So that hits. <laughs> all right. Oh, man. Uh, all right. So uh, what's, the, what's the damage? Uh, oh, boy. I really hope this isn't one of the kids running on all fours. You're just going to one-shot a kid, aren't you? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> one-shot, oh, one-shot no-scope a kid. <laughs> all right. So I am scope. at uh, 7... Uh, we are going all the way to, uh, yeah, we're going to 12 damage. Holy heck. All right. Yeah. The, uh, the object goes down quick and you hear like a, <laughs> this little whimpering of, of some small, uh, dog of some sort, like, <laughs> is going to turn back towards the father and just say, you didn't mention a dog. I don't have one. Hmm. He's gonna go over and take a look at the dog. Yeah. My drawback it's trait just is like... Dallas, <laughs> it, it's like this, uh, this hairy terrier with uh, this almost like white snout as it's kind of like laying on the ground. The arrow is pierced its side, uh, kind of uh attacking it onto the ground uh, as it gives out this little howl you see its big brown eyes gazing up at you um with a little whimper its its mouth is hanging open so it still has that giddiness and tail wag of seeing another individual almost forgiving you for this horrific action you've done to it um it's, it's and maybe it wants some pets done, right i mean like there's no there's no bringing this back so amos is gonna go over and pat it on the head take out his hatchet and just very quickly very quickly put it out of its misery so it doesn't make any more noise and with that there's <laughs> go 
God. I didn't sign up for dog Give me murder. Give me fuck. Give <laughs> <laughs> me oh. the little dog. A very cool dog I could have had. I'm, yeah, I'm, sure he had a, I'm, I'm sure the sergeant had a very good reason for murdering a dog. He did not know. Why was this out here? We need to keep moving. Yeah. You hear footsteps approaching you. Uh, it's hard to tell via the, the fog of the area where it's coming from, but like someone's approaching. Uh, Amos is definitely moving out of sight and getting into cover. Like, moving, attempting to hide, essentially. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, and you, you remember this person from before, uh, Livingston Hobb, uh, a, a preacher, uh, a Quaker preacher of sorts. Uh, he's looking around through the snow. You guys had traveled with him on the way up here. He departed just earlier on. Um, but he, he gets down on his knees towards and, and kind of just lifts the dog's head into his, his, his bosom. Uh, his shoulders sagging and shaking a little bit. Oh my god, he killed Slippy's dog! Oh my god. And Cecile is this close to crying? Because of a dog? Dog got her worried about a dog. Phineas is full on crying. Oh my god. Uh, Monsieur, I'm so sorry about. Is that your dog? You say me that is your dog? Yes, it's... I thought I... Oh my god. My day. Oh, jeez. Oh, I don't even believe the curse. Oh, you got to be bloody kidding me. Okay. Uh... My... Oh, my day. I swear I'm just going to be I will ever learn. What happened here? And... Oh, that's easy. Amy decided to shoot your dog. And he's like looking around. Why? Cause I don't know. He thought that, that your lovely dog just was just about to attack us or something. And then next thing you know, he just Amos just pulled out his bow and just shot it. I see. Yes, and I I hope he is very sorry. And she's like, is Cecile like literally looking for Amos? Cause she is angry <laughs> that. <laughs> Amos killed Just this side dog. Step. <laughs> Just sidestep away. <laughs> uh, father, this, this this is... Very sorry! Father, this is what's called a, uh, a, a, a collateral damage incident. Yeah, that's what we say in the military. Uh, this dog was uh, approaching rather aggressively. Uh, through, uh, it, it could not be seen and was mistaken for an enemy combatant and therefore uh, Sergeant Amos uh, unloaded on it with an arrow, as you can see that's clearly stuck uh, in its side right now. Uh, and, and, you know, these things happen. We are in time of war, and I just want to remind you of that. Uh, it's nobody's fault. It, it's merely an accident. Uh, but we are very, very sorry. And uh, uh, I would like to offer you some measure of uh, compensation, so uh, here, he's only got like two pence, no, but he gives no, him like it's, two it's, pence. It's, it's, it's fine. Um, I, I understand it was an accident. It's it's not not his fault. I I'm gonna miss this dog. Um, if you'd like, what I brings would, you? I would ha happily give you another dog. Oh, it's not. You know, a dog's uh, relationship is is particular. It's a lifelong engagement another dog doesn't fill the void it's understandable trying to replace family understandable no i i, I get that i i get that um, well we were father we were actually uh, out here tracking looking for a couple of boys might have been taken from a carriage no. have you seen anything like that no, I haven't, but I would readily join on this endeavor. Uh, sorry to hear that. Is the father okay? And he's kind of like looking at Calvin, uh, who's shivering in the cold. He's had better days, but he's getting through it all right. Okay. Well, if you don't mind, I would, I would join you in this endeavor. Scrutinize. I yeah, uh, I also want to do something when I get a chance to. 
I failed, All so right. yeah, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, TP, what are you thinking? Uh, so the the dog came from directly in front of us, as did the father, mm-hmm. correct? Or the, the mm-hmm. and um, Livingston, Livingston came. Uh, while they were talking, Amos quietly circled around behind the priest and is inspecting the tracks that he's leaving to see if they're at all similar to what was dragging the kids. Hmm. All right, go ahead and uh, roll it. Uh, survival. All right. Sure, blame the priest. Why don't you? I know, right? Mercy. Oh my goodness! I rolled a ninety-three again. <laughs> All right, I'm. You know what? It's a one shot. Let's. And we don't. Let's. Let's use another one of the coins and see. All right. Because I want the question answered. Uh, that just succeeded. My target was a was a. Oh no, no. My target was a fifty nine. <laughs> I rolled a sixty four. <laughs> if I oh, no. can I assist? How how do assist dice work? Uh, so, uh, assist, if you want to, uh, you can go ahead and first say how you're assisting. Um, and then we'll give, uh, a TP a bonus, depending on what your survival role is. Okay. Um, so, patients would kind of, um, sidle up kind of near him and just mm-hmm. kind of see where he was looking and she kind of you know she knows him well enough that she kind of knows what his thought process is so she'll kind of whisper behind his ear just that came from the same direction those tracks were being dragged to didn't it yes yes they did and then well, let's see all right yeah if you make it i'll give him a uh was it a plus 10 percent here we go rolling again. <laughs> I'm sure it was fine. My number is a 40. I rolled a 41. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you even playing a game? I feel like you're playing a game. Like... <sighs> no more dice uh... for anyone. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's hard to tell. Like, uh, you see his tracks, the dog's tracks, but whether or not it has any similarity with the tracks that you have been tracking, hard to say. Anyone yeah, else want to join us, Father? <laughs> what? Yes, I think uh, would be best to be us then. I would like to try after I you know, consoled myself over the fact that Amos killed the dog. I would like to try and see <laughs> yeah. if I can figure this out. Cause Go ahead and, and post Ish. survival. Yeah, someone uh, <laughs> Hermit just she pointed out that the only Amos. the only role that wasn't a fail was when um, the the uh, flat out murder of the puppy. Yeah, so. Oh. Oh boy. Uh, so I guess my. You said survival, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so my thingy is supposed to be a 35. I got a 29. What did hey! That mean? You got it. You're good. But, you got under it. Yeah. Oh, you got, okay. You got under it. Oh, you yeah, you're supposed under to get, it? Trying to get Yeah, you're trying to get under the number you're looking for. Yeah, okay. pretty much for Grim and Perilous, you're trying to get your mm-hmm. base stat plus your skills, uh, and you're. It's mm-hmm. a roll under percentile system, so you want to get under the. Oh, okay. okay. So everyone burn so... their dice and get new ones, uh, except <laughs> for you, Brittany. You're fine. Uh, we got that success. Um, but yeah, looking over, uh, they're definitely going in the same direction, which might be a little suspicious. Um, but the foot. Prints are definitely different. Uh, Father, uh, Major, uh, th- uh, you came this direct. Where did you come from exactly? Before your poor dog died. I was uh, tracking my dog. Um, she was. She got away from me, and uh, I was trying to find her and bring her back. We can continue on my journey. Interesting. 
Because it looks like uh, these are the tracks we are supposedly supposed to follow. Are uh, Amos and uh, Phineas, yes? Uh, I do believe we might have to go this way. Because. If it saves the kids, not... sure. Yes, did you say the children? Yes. Uh, everyone, we should go this way. Why am I deleter? I don't know, but. Uh... And she's Cecilia pointing this way. But yeah, we're gonna go that way, so follow me, please. Alright. Uh, father still coming with us? Mm hmm. Alright, sounds good. Alright, I'll follow. Excellent. Yeah, and you guys are pretty much just following the tracks that you guys uh, were. Uh, just kind yeah. of following both a little bit. Um, so moving forward, you do see a little two story homestead. Uh, the wooden beam surrounding it, uh, two windows on the first story. Um, there's no light coming from within it, um, though the surrounding areas have a little bit of garden to it. Uh, some parsley, a little bit of basil, it looks like. Could I sneak up to reconnoiter, peek in one of the windows, see if I can hear anything? Move up nice yeah, and quiet like. Go ahead and roll stealth. Uh, is this a rural Sneak. setting? Uh, uh, yes, it is. Uh, my rural stalker, I auto succeed stealth checks Ooh. in rural settings. So I don't have to roll a dice, which means I do a thing. It's the so way I'm to win this game. That's, that's the only rolling. way to yeah, go for it. <laughs> legitimately <laughs> avoid rolling dice whenever possible. Uh, move up very very cautiously kind of peek into the window at first to see and listening all the way excellent um yeah kind of peeking in through the window you see that there's a uh, a sitting room and then a doorway that leads into the kitchen there's a stairwell that uh leads up to the second floor um the window is frosted um uh, just because of the the weather uh, there's a little fireplace in there, but it does look like it's been lit recently. Other than that, there's nothing really else that you can see from this vantage point, from this window. But does it look like there's anyone inside? He's going to wave everyone else forward as he starts making his way through the door to the door. Oh, look, Parsley. <laughs> Phineas, darling, leave the wild posse alone. Later, later. Don't trust the wild posse. It's not wild. Yet. It's clearly very cultivated. But uh, oh, uh, did you see anything in there, Sergeant? Not yet. As I start pushing the door open with one hand, and I flip out my hatchet in the other hand. Oh, this is what he. This is the voice he does when he wants me to stop talking. So okay. Yeah, it creaks open into this very dark household. Um, from your vantage point, you can see the kitchen just beyond uh, several potware uh, dangling uh, from a hook. Nice and quiet now, Private, as we begin uh, to go inside. As, he, as Phineas rustles through his bag, like clanging. <laughs> <laughs> um, to get his bayonet out to to fix his bayonet on his rifle. So, so, sorry. Get it in the crate. Pots, and, quiet. pots and pans and out. pots and pans and spare bullets and shit. And then, yeah. All right. Phineas, can you do that any more louder? And she's. Oh, I, de and I definitely can. This is an improvement. He's actually right. Mm. It's, it's better. It's better. It's not good, but it's better. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, and then Phineas g gets up right next to Amos, like, rifle up with the bayonet affixed, ready to stab anything that moves. Yeah, you notice the staircase leading upwards, and right now you're in this sitting room area. Uh, there are two wooden chairs, um, one of which is kind of one of those rocking chairs that's 
continually in motion, maybe by the wind kind of coming abruptly through the door as you opened it. The window this continues to be fogged up. Uh, do you want us? I can clear the upstairs, Sergeant. Let's do it together. And All right. Turn to Cecile, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming Cecile and Patience followed us in because. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. We don't want to get too clogged up on the stairs, so give us a minute, and then. If you hear noises, follow. Yeah, Calvin and Livingston nod. We'll take care of them. There's going to be the the uh, the matching green eyes of I think Patience and and Amos would meet as just kind of a like. We had that conversation earlier. I think that just reminder we don't trust Livingston. And she gives a and... slight nod and kind of digs around a bit and gets her knife out, and she also starts kind of getting her flintlock ready to go. All right, move upstairs. Yeah. Creeping right. up the stairs with Amos. Yeah, it definitely has this hollow creaking feel as you start to move up. Uh, for patience um, and uh, Cecile, um, Livingston opens up a, a, a roughed up pocket Bible, uh, flipping through it, um, turning to patients. He looks at you with these kind of, uh, icy blue eyes, um, with that same stern look as any preacher gives. First John. 1, 8 through 10. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful. And just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we have made him a liar. And his word is not in us. Patience during these strong, difficult times. Is there anything you'd like to confess to me? Uh, I, um, I, I stole a bit of snuff from my parents' snuff box. That, that's about it. What do you mean, that's about it? You're guilty of the crime of theft. You have stolen something that was not yours. And as he's phrasing it this way, she stops, like, prepping her weapon and just kind of has her hand on the knife. Um, yes, I did leave some money to pay them back before we left. And she kind of shoots a look at Cecile. To see if she's noticing this conversation. Oh, she does because she she like first she hears a prayer and the the uh, well the, the uh, John thing and she trying to figure out well how come her skin didn't burn on fire when she heard that and then when she heard the phrasing of that question she slowly turns around and goes, Father. Why are you asking young patients about their sins? I do believe you should be asking about mine. I'm a preacher. I welcome any sins that you're willing to divulge. It's only through him that you are able to meet eternity with a smile on your face. So, if you have something to confess, child, please confess. I killed a man one time in bed. I had to do it for the job. That will not was probably get your... me to heaven. Was this your husband? <laughs> she uh, laughed like, oh, darling, if I was married, he would not like what I'm doing right now. 
Yeah, it's, no, it was for a job. It was so quick anyway. Not only are you guilty of murder, but adultery, fornication with a man who is not your spouse. I wouldn't call it guilt. And, I don't feel, feel nothing for him. And a little bit of pride, it seems like. You don't believe you deserve God's forgiveness. Yes and no. If I meet God, okay. If I meet uh, the devil, okay. You say that, and but you... Do you have understanding what? whatsoever of what hell is like? I do. And, uh... If the devil wishes me to... Wishes to torture me... I would look him straight in the eye and said, go ahead and do it. I'll scream so loud that he'll get so tired of me. He'll have to take me back, take me somewhere far away so I won't scream. Hell is not a place of the devil's playground. It is a place without God. Every good thing that has ever come upon you is because of God's grace. There will be no torture. No screams in the dark that will just be you and yourself and your own thoughts to torture. You will be that which binds you, that which hurts you. You will violate yourself in ways that you could never imagine. That is hell, my child. It's being within your own mind and not being able to get out. And he says that, and I... I slowly read from my Muscatoon. But as I do that, I, I keep level with him. I'm like, Father, it sounds like you, uh, you've you been there before. Because all of these things you're saying sounds like you witnessed it. All of it. It's in the Bible, dear child. No. If you would read it from front to back as many times as I have, you would glean this sort of information. Alright, I, I did, then trust me. It's quite interesting, and it's the miracle. My skin didn't burn on fire every time I read it. So I'm going to ask you one more time. And she's really looking deep, looking straight at him, like, straight up. You say you read this Bible back at the front, yes. but I feel like... I feel like something's wrong. You you say this, but I feel like you're not telling the truth. And why would you think that? Just because these words you disagree with? I do not disagree with none of I do not disagree. <laughs> Excuse me, I cannot talk apparently. I do not Gesundheit. disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, sometimes uh, this accent, people cannot understand me, but... I understand you very well. There's something about you. Oh. Lady. How so? It's plain. It's in the Bible. It's, it's text. It's word. Easily read. Even. By someone. Such as you. Better too. My mother been beating the Bible at me for so long that I ran away because I got tired of it. But still, every word you say to young patients, I feel like you're digging, digging a little deeper. What is it? That's a preacher's job is to dig. Yes, yes it is. I'm going to keep my eye on you. If you ask her. Any other weird questions? I will not be afraid to knock a preacher out. Understand? You haven't been around preachers very long, have you? No, just, well, yeah, see, I've been with around one, almost all my life, my mother, trust me, but also he was a reverend and he would not stop screaming, trust me. I didn't torture him, but he screamed the word at us. 
for so long. Mm. So, if you ever ask one, one more weird question, I promise you, Father, I'm not afraid to keep violent. And then I, she just turns back and waits on uh, Phineas and Amos to get back because she is just like something weird. That conversation was weird. Something's about something's about to happen. But uh, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> so the officer and his dear, lovely private uh, go up the stairs to the um, second floor. Um, to your left, you see that the door is open, leading to a very bare, essential bedroom. Um, you see a window outlooking uh, some of the gardens and the trees. A little bit of snow is falling. Um, it's almost nice and serene and peaceful. To your right, you see a, a powdered room, uh, a large oval mirror staring back at you. What's the place, Agent? In... They're not up here. We must have missed a cellar or or something. They have to be here. Could he's gonna uh... kind of walk over in a little frustration and walk in front of the mirror. Excellent. And as you move in front of the mirror, um you definitely hear something scratching in one of the little wardrobes underneath it. Did you? This did kind you, of. Private. Yeah, I heard that too, Sergeant. Be ready. And Hatch points his bayonet at the end. Yep. <laughs> is going to pull the wardrobe very slowly open. It's, it's full of puppies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those dastardly <laughs> things. <laughs> uh, but out comes this like little white little rat, uh, kind of looking at you with this long whiskers, kind of moving its little nose. Like... <sighs> Damn it. Uh, everyone make, or sorry, the people upstairs make a mm -hmm. uh, challenging awareness test. So minus 10%. Challenging awareness. All right. 39. Matter with that. I rolled a 69. Nice, but. Mm. 83. <laughs> that should be an auto. My goodness. <laughs> did you, did you make it? No, very much no. No, double no, double no. All right, cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Oh, man. Um, so as uh, this... Um, uh, Calvin's kind of looking around past the kitchen downstairs. Livingston um, has closed the door. It's kind of like this draft. It's cold in here. Um, so he, he closes the door. Uh, Brittany, go ahead yes. and make me an awareness. Okay. Uh, I wait. Where is awareness? That's a good question. Where would I? Oh, okay. I I can do that. I think. Please. Ah, uh, ah, uh, um, uh, mm, I made a fifty. I made a fifty-seven. That that fifty ain't yeah. good. I got a thirty. Take away. You say take away ten. Yeah. That's that's a. Oh no, Brittany can't do math for a minute. Hold on. Well, that be like a forty something. Yeah. Brittany can't do math. The do Wait, hold on. That's zero. One seven. What? That's seven. Yeah, you're just. What's your base roll? So you're looking at your awareness test. Uh, my perception is thirty-five, and I got all mm -hmm. three dots filled in for awareness. So all right. What, so what every every skill should be ten percent. Right? You but sure? Yeah, I don't think it's. 
<clears throat> yeah, it should be oh, kind of to your, to your right uh, if you're looking at the the pre gens, the ten percent and stuff like that. No, I literally just filled the sheet out myself, and my recession is thirty five. The pH bleep is two. Oh god! Oh god! I don't know. I did the sheet wrong. Oh, That's cool. Uh, <laughs> so in, in this case, it doesn't sound like with the penalty that you made it. What was your uh, roll? Uh, a fifty-seven. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that that's, that's, yeah. That's sad to decide. In in true uh, ERP fashion. Uh, also, thank you for the retweets and sub goals. Uh, we are going to give these uh, fine folks some uh, big crits and uh, re rolls. Um, so re-rolls for everyone! Pacha! Yay! Thank you! <laughs> Thank it's not gonna so happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure it's gonna be fine. <laughs> Whatever happens. Uh, alright, cool! So, um... Dear, uh, recently departed Cisa, um... You are going to take six damage. Ow! 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 Oh, that! Oh, that hurts so much. I think. Yeah. So you feel I... this piercing uh, feeling in your back as uh, something sharp penetrates just to the right of your spinal column, uh, right into the Ow. flesh and moves up a little bit tearing the flesh asunder and a little bit of blood starts leaking out of your backside um patience you turn and you see uh livingston uh the wooden handle of some sort of knife stuck in the back of your Ooh. your friend ow son of a ow, uh, yeah she so ow. She is gonna shout in uh, Wampanoag, so that Am like just in case anyone else is listening. But she's gonna shout for Amos, just come and help. Uh, and she's going to lift up her flintlock and just point blank shoot at this guy, because he just Excellent. stabbed her friend. <laughs> so... All right, I'll give you that roll, then we will hop into initiative. Okay. Uh oh. This, this is fun. I think I'm lightly. So for this, um, I just I just roll damage, correct? Or do I need to do a roll to attack? You need to do the martial ranged. Uh, oh yeah, martial attack. ranged, obviously. Okay. So martial ranged. If I roll. Oh boy. Um. So that's a fifty-eight. So I failed. Um. Big crits. Big crits. Big crits. Re -roll, re -roll. Yeah, can I go ahead and take one of my crits to re-roll? Yeah. Yeah? Sure. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take a, one of my crits. Thanks for the crits, y'all. <laughs> that is much better. Actually, it's not even that it's much better. I rolled a 41 again, but my combat's a 42. So we're good. Ooh. <laughs> Just barely, <laughs> but we made it. All right, describe what happens. Okay. So, hey, give me that um, too. yeah, so she, she hears, um, she hears Cecile, like, crying out, and she kind of whips her head around, and just, yeah, she sees the preacher having just attacked her, and without thinking, you know, she calls for her cousin, because that's kind of her default <laughs> way of thinking now, like, I need your help, and, um, yeah, just lifts the gun up, points it, to his chest, biggest area that she can aim at, and uh, yeah, just fires at point blank. Hopefully, doing okay. Six damage. 
Ooh, nice. All right, yeah, he okay. he is wounded. You see, like, uh, in his uh, his little white uh, preacher outfit, so kind of like that little the collar there. Uh, this redness blossoms up out of his chest and and just kind of filling that area as he coughs up blood. Uh, some of it uh, pours onto the back of uh, Cecile. You feel that warmness of blood trickling down your neck as he leans forward. Um, and yeah, let's uh, let's roll initiative. Uh, it is one d ten plus your initiative. Easy peasy. Uh, ha- oh Jesus! I don't think I rolled on my initiative. Oh no! Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh no! <laughs> uh, so it's seven. I got a seven plus your initiative. What's that? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, it's on the second page of your character. Second page of your character. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you have the you're probably I, using the flames of free more. Maybe I'll try hinder one. Yeah, I have. So, uh, yeah, it'll be three plus your perception bonus. Uh, yeah, as you can add six if that makes it easier. Yeah, three plus three plus PB. Okay. So. Three plus PB. Okay. Yeah, and just post uh, what you get on the uh, chat for me to see. All right, hold on. Rolling bones. This- And to finish All my right. turn, can I go ahead and hide? Is that something I could do? Or um, should I wait? You can or, like, move. In yeah, it, it's gonna be hard to hide in this small area. Um, but we'll we'll handle that on your initiative. Uh, okay. All right, okay, no so worries. I am going on a seven. Uh, so TP Grant, you are first. You hear that that shout from your your sister from down below. Uh, turn to private the private and just say follow me and is going to go out the door I'm going to use my first AP to move out the door and get to the stairs as I'm taking out my carbine um, mm-hmm. and I'm uh, it was already loaded bringing the, bringing the hammer back coming down and sighting who between the two of them who appears to be the greater threat to uh, to patients at the moment between which two people uh, is Livingston the only one attacking people? Yeah, from your vantage point, as you come down, you see Livingston kind of slouched against uh, Cecile uh, with a knife up in her back, uh, and uh, your dear sister uh, just there. You see the smoke coming from her gun aimed at Livingston. Um, right. Yeah, I'm gonna take another AP to take aim. At Livingston, at Livingston to okay. bump my attack up another one. So I'm looking for a 59 as I shout, Cousin, get down! I'm going to use one of my crit rerolls to roll <laughs> that. Let's try another set of dice. Let's try, let's try. Of dice course. 16, there we go. That's a hit. Excellent. All right. <laughs> All right, and that's going to be... Uh, Seven damage. Ooh, nice. All right, let me know how. The, what does this look like? Uh, as uh, Amos comes down the stairs, he's gonna stop about halfway through uh, down the stairs, shoulder his weapon, squeeze the trigger, and as it kicks, he's just going to toss it to the side before he even sees if it hits, and flip up the hatchet and be ready to move down. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So you see uh, Livingston kind of ratchet back uh grabbing his his kind of side as uh another hole blossoms out on his chest as he moves backwards uh kind of falling back towards the window um so we have colin Brittany, and uh uh Dracu all at 10 uh so we'll go with the highest initiate or if you guys have a preference for older we'll go with that uh, well, I mean, I was following Amos down the stairs, so like, can I? Oh, I like that. Yeah. Take care. Go oh. ahead. Um, and uh, he's gonna get to the bottom of the stairs, see that it's the, the goddamn priest stabbing people, which is a moment of, huh? Uh, but <laughs> bayonet affixed, he sees sees that there's you know someone just got stabbed, so, um, 
he has his bayonet still fixed, so he's going to spend uh, two AP to charge and then stab the dude with his bayonet. So that's all. All right, go ahead and roll. Okay, I'm going to use a crit (laughs) because that didn't go well. I rolled a six the second time, though, so... Ooh, much nice. better. Uh, okay. So, damage for a bayonet. Uh, just combat bonus. So, my combat bonus is seven. Um, am I missing something else that should be added to the damage on that? Or is that just it? Just damage uh, they're usually CD pretty low. Something? Yeah. Yeah. All right, seven. All right, yeah, he looks Seven with messed bayonet. up now. Yeah, uh, you 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 kind of plunge right into him, uh, smashing him backwards into the window. He kind of you you hear his back break uh, as bits of shards of glass puncture uh, his stomach, filling out to the other side as he's hanging like limp on the shattered window. The breeze outside kind of wafting in as the snow falls on the lights of his eyes as he peers up into the darkened sky and then is still. Oh god, I killed a priest. Oh god, I killed a priest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Oh no. Oh, god, don't start that. Oh crap. boy. <sighs> Patience, are you alright? Cecile? <sighs> I am doing I, very I'm terrible. Fine, but Cecile. Ah, and, um, I am doing so very terrible. I've got some. Um, I have some bandages. Can I attempt to try to bandage Cecile up? Yeah, of course. Go ahead and roll uh, medicine. And during this whole time, like the realization uh, for for your character, Colin, that this preacher is still alive. Um, you remember oh. during the war that there is a particular way that is most horrific to die, and it's when something punctures your lungs, which brings in the blood, and you basically suffocate on your own lifeblood, uh, which is difficult and horrific as you just kind of pass out from it and then die and he's doing that right now his eyes just kind of looking up and there's a little bit of a shudder of the realization that your bayonet has pierced his lung and the windows have I, kind of uh, done the rest can I do a little something to finish this yeah so he doesn't what suffer it's very simple because I have a bayonet stuck in him already pull the trigger <laughs> alright excellent you pull the trigger, the like smoke rises from his wound. Um, he shudders one more time and then is still. Jump at that big private. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, well God. Done. killed the bloody priest. Oh. Yeah. And Patience, how are you? Uh, what does it look like as you're helping uh, Cecile with her wound? Um, so she kind of, like, tears the clothes away just a little bit just to get at the wound, and she's, you know, getting the bandages pressed in and wrapping it in place. She kind of jumps whenever that, you know, shot goes off. She wasn't really expecting that. Um, and she kind of, like, shoots a shoots a look over at Phineas, and, oh boy, and just <laughs> keeps keeps doing the bandaging, and kind of, once once everything is covered, she, like, gets the clothing back over it gets the uh jackets i'm assuming you've got something for the cold and just yeah. kind of like pats it down and like really makes sure that she's nice and secure oh. that's that is the last time i piss up a priest god damn it and hopefully the last uh, time i kill one <laughs> Oh, you killed him? Thank you, because I was going to do it myself. But, Patience, are you, are you all right? I, I'm fine, I think. And if, if you're feeling okay, that, 
kind of felt like that came out of nowhere, but he was being very creepy. Well, when you tell a priest your sins about killing a man, then yeah, it could get creepy. And I just turn to Phoenix and say, oh, and she pats him on the shoulder like, Thank you for killing him! Because my hands was about to strike with him anyway! Phineas is pray Phineas is furiously praying. Um, he's doing like a sign of the cross, like wrong, because he hasn't really done this in a while. But he is like, I, I just gotta pray. I just gotta. I just gotta. Pray. I mean, that never used to happen before, but right now I gotta do it. Oh God. Uh... Oh, yeah. That while that's Phineas what is that's... having uh, this breakdown. The the book that he had been reading is that on the ground. Mm -hmm. Or the I just would like to pick it up and just really quickly flip through it to see if it was in fact a Bible. Yeah, and the the uh, it's like this little psalm book, uh, and on the front in kind of these gold letters is entitled "The Book of Devotions." Um, kind of as you're flipping through it, you're looking at the margins. Um, it's all like very cryptic in uh looking very much uh into the past sort of writing uh as if the person who had been scribbling in it had been alive uh, a long time ago does it... anyone know what this book is well I know he was sprouting of John one something asking about our sins and I know he was asking patience that and I may or may not have threatened him mm. so I don't know what the book is patience would you perhaps take a look at it do you know anything about this I may have read something like this and to the GM so I have a I have a thing called encyclopedic memory. Um, mm -hmm. When attempting to recall written numbers or copy content, you automatically succeed the skill test. Can I flavor that in a way to see if I remember ever having read something like this, or if this is familiar to me? Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. We'll say, so you kind of remember the, the Book of De Devotion, the Psalms written by King Solomon, uh, a sort of... Uh, uh, several chapters in the Bible that were meant to be sung throughout uh, the old congregations, uh, many of them chronicling um, the adventures of King Solomon. Uh, the Book of Devotion particularly is a very unique religious text, uh, especially for uh, this individual to, to have. Um, a lot of it is uh, has to do with kind of this almost rebirth, this peeling away of the visage that we all understand and know and, and looking beyond it. So this is kind of familiar, the, the Book of Devotion, but that doesn't seem like anything a Quaker priest would have on them. It deals with rebirth and moving past the facade of life. It, mm. This is kind of strange. Amos is going to go pick his carbine back up and turn over to Phineas and just say, have you found anything suspicious on the priest? Oh, I'm sorry. You want me to rob his body now, too, after I a priest? You want me to, to run his pockets? Okay, fine, fine. Yeah, uh, search the corpse. <laughs> for freedom, for freedom. Raise a glass to freedom. Okay. Uh, uh, and he starts, like, opening up the priest's, like, jacket and looking inside his pockets and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of hard because like, you have parts of these window shards piercing his stomach. Uh, so moving things you have to tear, and there's still that leakage uh, of red blood uh, uh, pulling around the kind of the, the interior parts of the window, filling it up and kind of spilling out 
outside the, the window. And as you kind of lean forward, you can almost hear the slight pitter-patter of his heartbeat. And then something else. A slight murmur, a mumbling of something quiet and small. A little scratching at some sort of wooden um, door of some kind. Hello? Hello? Uh, uh, hello. Hi. Hello. Can you help who, us? Who are you? Help us. Are you, are you children who have recently been kidnapped? Yes. Oh, then sure. Is yeah, there... we can help you. <laughs> Where? Basement. Where are you? In the basement. Ah, Sergeant, there is a basement. There's a bit. Yeah, we missed yeah. the basement. There's a basement. Wait, you hear that too, right? You hear the the kids. You hear the kids? Do we? Yeah, you don't really hear it. Amos is finishing loading his carbine and, like, flipping the flash pan cover closed and just looks you. Private, stop screwing around. Did you find anything? Yeah, there the is... The, there's ki the kids are in the basement. Excellent. Where's the basement? Uh, probably just, uh hatch outside, I imagine, maybe around the back of the house. We didn't notice it. I'll go check it out. Let me, let me, let me, I'll go check it out. Do you want me to come with you? Phineas, try to be brave boy. Uh, nah, nah, it's fine. I'm sh I'll, I'll check. Don't worry about it. All right. And he goes out the front and looks around the house for like one of those side door things to the basement, something like that. Yeah. And uh, kind of on right on the other side, you see the, the blood has melted uh, of the, the hot blood of the preacher has like melted some of the snow around this uh, basement door. The two sets of handles right there. You can almost see this tiny little eye gazing at you from the crack between these two wooden panels. Are you all right? This is, uh, this is your friend Phineas. Can you hear me? Okay. All right, I'm, I, I, well, hey, I'm not armed. Well, I am, but it's not loaded. Uh, and I'm coming in now, okay? So. Here I come. And he's going to open it, but he does have a sword. He carries a hanger sword. And he's going to open it, but he does have one hand on the grip of his sword, just in case. Yeah, as you open the the door, um, this small humanoid body just kind of flops as if it was attached to the door going down the stairs. And you hear this crack uh, as bone shatters and this little object rolls out into the bottom of the basement face down into the mud and brickwork whoa 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 oh, oh god oh god and he goes running down the stairs um hand obviously not on sword anymore because there's panic and runs over and like tries to turn this kid over because he said it's face down what's everyone else doing seeing your your companion <laughs> go down into the depths of this house I think once hearing the shout, that would probably be like, uh, and start moving outside. Excellent. How about everyone else? Yeah, while we were I... waiting, I would have taken the chance to reload my flintlock. But yeah, I'll chase off after as soon as we hear that shot. Shout. 
I hear the shout. I say, Putain! Oh, for crying out loud, grab my uh, Muscatoon and ran after him. Ran after the shout. So you guys are all gathered either on the front or the top of the stairs or down below. You see these little blue feet. Um, the nails uh, look like they've been pulled off. Little bits of flesh still dangling from it. Uh, the body that you're holding onto, uh, dearest private, um it is blue and pale you see the little blue veins uh within its wrist and its pale flesh uh definitely of a child gazing up at you there's a slight dent on the forehead probably from the fall um but it looks very much dry and devoid of blood it's almost like this sack of meat laying upon your arms. Ah, here's the Mitch I remember. It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm glad we're together again. <laughs> Sergeant, it's... I, I think that... I, I don't know, they're all bluey? They've gone all bluey. I think the uh, maybe it's the cold, maybe the freezing to death. I don't know. Amos uh, had his weapon not completely at the ready but definitely was holding it in a position he's going to see them move the weapon to a more relaxed position and start walking down the stairs say they're dead private too late what happened to him sergeant I mean, look, they got the... The nails are ripped off. I mean... Some torture these kids? Yeah. I check them over to see possible cause of death. Yeah. It looks like uh, there are these various uh, protrusions, almost as if these unsharpened teeth had bit away bits of the flesh and then sucked up what ever was on the other side is this anything that match sort of like folk tales or things being someone who lived in the woods between cultures would have picked up on yeah it kind of so the, you, you can kind of remember several things that drink the the blood of mankind i mean there's a wind eagle there's uh, even the uh, almost childish vampires, um, ghouls, um, all sorts of things. Seeing that the carbine comes out of the relaxed position back into both hands, as Amos begins kind of scanning the basement and facing away from the private with the door behind him, just says, Private, get them out of here and let's get out of this basement. Patience and Cecil, where are you guys at? I would possibly be behind Amos, and then I see the child, and you kind of hear her swear in Hebrew and make the sign of the cross. And she readies her Muscatoon. She sighs and goes, Whoever did this is a dead man. And then she just slowly goes down. Muscatoon in front, ready to shoot anything. How about um, patience? patience would have probably stayed up towards the top of the staircase to kind of keep an eye out. And, um, yeah, he's just kind of looking down the stairs, just kind of horrified at what's going on. Um, but as soon as, uh, Amos kind of, like, got ready for a fight again, she would have kind of, you know, sucked it up and, uh, readied her weapon as well. 
and just started like scanning outside uh not even sure what she's looking for but just anything out of place so as you're looking around dearest uh patience um there's something that is missing it's almost like a where's waldo type of thing you're looking around and you remember almost like a sharp tick in your brain that there's no longer a body laid out across the window shattered and broken there's still the remnants of blood there and there's this sound this smacking of lips in something fighting back a clawing against the wooden board creaking below a muffled scream almost it seems something to be coming from the, the kitchen body. something has gotten the preacher's body and I think I hear something else in the house. Start moving towards patience. Okay. Go. Go. And Amos begins to calmly, but very, uh, us, like, firmly back out of the basement and up the stairs. Yeah, as you kind of come around the basement, getting back into the main area of the household, you see the kitchen just beyond, and you see uh, Kavil, father, laying out uh, right in front of, under the door frame. The upper part of his body can be seen, and there's tears coming down his eyes as he's looking at you. You see his body moving and shuffling as if something just behind the wall is moving him and enjoying him. You see a little bit of blood kind of filling up the cracks of the wooden beams just below. Begin to circle so I can change my perspective. Can I see see what is around that corner without walking directly to it. I want enough you can. room you're to still a little it. bit yeah, you're still a little bit closer, probably about two feet, uh, as you I assume have your rifle kind of pivoted as you lean against the wall and see uh the preacher has both hands, uh which are these long, almost white, pale nails splitting open the chest of this man you see organs lungs everything almost these little puddling of blood bubbling out from his chest cavity as he looks up his smile is beautiful and pure and wonderful uh his eyes gazing at you from his spectacles and you hear a slight hum mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can I shoot him right in that mm -hmm. smile? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, with him humming, with him humming, could I take a second to take one AP of aim? Yes, you can. He seems, and maybe this is a good thing, or maybe it's a bad thing, but he seems very confident gazing at the end of this barrel. 59. 34, I hit. Ooh, nice, nice. Uh, I rolled a three, but I would like to use one of these uh, fine coins here to turn that into a six mm -hmm. and explode it. All right, explode it. All right, so that uh, next thing I rolled was a five. So that's going to be uh, 11. That's going to be 17 damage. Holy hell. Oh, God. All right. Um... <laughs> you, you shoot off 
his his shoulder just explodes and you see this bit of fractured bone almost roaring out as if it was teeth uh and almost this you guys can all hear this guttural noise as as like part of his arm is it's just off and these bits of flesh are, are trying to entangle with each other as he's kind of like rolling back and trying to get up with his one good arm gazing at you his jaw starting to open into what you can only imagine is your height as it starts to crawl forward um so why don't you go ahead and give me a resolve test being you're the only one who sees this thing i would love to uh that is a failure uh I'm gonna, yeah, that's creepy right. let's 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 do it Oh, right. Take uh, nine. Nine mental damage. All right. Mental peril. Uh, nine mental peril. Right, that moves me down to imperiled. And I think for that, Amos is going to have just fired to see this happen. And he's going to just sideways the, the carbine and throw it at this thing to try to keep it from coming forward for a second. As he Excellent. starts going for his hatchet and moving back towards <laughs> the party. <laughs> All right, everyone, roll initiative. Let's do this, and let's hope someone survives. <gasps> oh yeah, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, All right, we got everything up. It looks like TP, you are you are number one once again. It looks like Amos is gonna slide back to where everyone else is without his firearm. Now um, he's going to uh, just kind of like give the private a sharp rap on the arm and say, "Prepare to fire." And he's going to take the wait action. Uh, and when it gets close enough, and it's gonna get when it gets into close range, I'm gonna whack it with the hatchet. Excellent. All right, coming up is Dear Private. Oh, I love this. This is so perfect. Um, you may recall a few minutes ago I murdered a priest. Uh, and I do the remember way I that. Did so, the way I did so was to stab him with a bayonet and then pull the trigger on my musket, which means my musket's not loaded. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> As you say, be ready. He's like, oh, oh god! <laughs> he starts like furiously pulling out the pulling out the paper cartridge, pouring the powder down, <laughs> getting it ready to go. Um, and that's all three. I have to spend all three AP to reload the musket. So all right, that's, excellent. That's it for him. He's just furiously attempting to load this thing like way faster than he ever has. <laughs> excellent. In Everyone, uh, except for uh, our dear officer, make a resolve check. What moves forward is almost like you, you see something that's behind Cavill's body as it starts to slide forward towards you. It looks like he's using the body as basically a, a human shield. Uh, you can see bits of these long fingers that have extended out and nails that have ruptured the sides of this person as it crawls towards you. I got it. Oh, how scary and cute. I actually succeeded. Oh. Crazy. Ooh. Oh, oh. Uh, I rolled a 100. So what is this? Oh! <laughs> oh. So, um, what were we supposed to roll again? Uh, oh, resolve. resolve. Resolve? Where mm -hmm. the heck is Resolve? What will Resolve? Oh, willpower. Oh, I have a six. I rolled a, a zero. A, a zero and a six. So I'm guessing that's just... A, what's a zero a and six. a... I'll do. A mm -hmm. six. A six. Yeah. And yeah, I am going to burn oh. my crit. To Why would you to do that? Roll this. Please. Why would you do such a thing? Yeah, sure, fine. Much better. Um, I did pass. My right, it sounds like forty-four. Yeah, with a six, you're gonna you're gonna pretty much. Uh, you're good. Pass, you got uh, a six. Yeah. Did everyone? It sounds like everyone passed it. All right. So what what do you guys do as you're kind of like 
whatever the fuck this is, it's moving <laughs> towards you. Uh, and how do you kind of rationalize not going bonkers? I'm, I'm going to say that it's, it's through no force of will at all. It's entirely because Phineas is completely fixated on loading his musket that he's not paying attention. <laughs> It's like just like this blurry thing moving towards you. You're like, oh, yeah, it's, totally, it's in the peripheral. Can't worry about that right now. Gotta load the musket. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Um, the thing that I could potentially have, similar to the whole folklore thing, is this something that I could maybe recognize as like a monster fairy tale kind of thing? I think so, yeah. For for this, we'll, we'll say yeah. So, um, it is a ghoul of some sort. Okay. Um, so, beyond um, that, you you know it can pretty much, like, shed its skin uh, whenever it takes, like, a lot of damage to basically just come back. Okay. Um, so, Patience is, like, at first, she's a little taken aback, but then she recognizes, like, oh, this is a ghoul. Okay okay, we can handle this. This is okay. And so she kind of calms herself down and, like, rationalizes, like, like no, we've we can, we've studied this. We can do this. Yeah. That's this is Tuesdays calm. at the Waffle House. It's fine. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, Cecile, how's your character kind of reacting to this? Well, first, she sees this thing, like, what? She pulls out her muscatoon, and I guess she's just gonna point at it and uh, what does she want to do can she like uh, i guess it's not your not your turn yet we just want to know what your oh. kind of reaction was to this uh resolve check oh this is just she just like okay one that's bloody creepy two that's bloody creepy that's it this is just really cool. All right. While she's like getting her gun together. Yeah. All right, patience. You are up next. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and try to fire my flintlock at it because I All did right. reload it while I was chilling out. That is. Yeah, that's a seven. So I think I passed that. I hope. And. Oh yeah. We're looking at five damage. Okay. Eh. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> and, um, it smacks I'm into gonna... the this bloody thing. <laughs> and gonna uh, I'm gonna remember what Amos said, and she's going to kind of backtrack like a few a few feet just to get further out of range. Okay. Maybe if there's I remember a tree him that's telling really you to close. run. He, he he said one thing, she heard another. So she's going to, you know, <laughs> maybe like if there's a tree nearby, she might kind of like halfway hide behind the tree. Yeah, it'll it'll probably take two movements uh to get all the way cuz it's kind of like a little clearing around this uh homestead. Right. Okay. Uh, so you'd have to get outside and make a run for it. Uh but all right. And Brittany, it is your turn. Okay, well, she's going to try, she's going to take two a AP, I guess that's what it's called, to try and shoot this thing? That makes sense. I think sense. I have that right. Do I have mm -hmm. it right? I want to make sure I have it right because I have a full I'm like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. We're just yeah, gonna it's range to... combat. Okay, so I'm going to just take two, H two AP. This is not gonna be fine. This is this is gonna be great, guys. Let's see, can I get under a forty-three? Nope. Darn it. Um. Um. Yeah, no, that does not work. I got a sixty-nine. <laughs> that, that doesn't work. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> can I? Can I use like one of my rerolls, one mm -hmm. of my the dice things to try again? Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay. I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's just try it, shall we? I have a seven. That'll hit. Okay. 
So What's the damage? With usually, the like, it's one, yeah, one D6, and you should have the, I think it's usually the combat bonus that you had. Okay. Um, for my Muscatoon, is one to AP. I get six plus something yards. So, alright, let's see. Oh, I actually rolled a six. That's, that's funny. Ooh, so that explodes? Yeah, it explodes. So you roll yeah, it again and I... add the next... Alright. Let's see. I got a two. I got a two. Oh. It, so I got so a two. Full of eight. Excellent. Yeah. So that does uh, smash into it and there's this uh, kind of echoing roar as this thing just kind of tears open Cavill, uh, 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 his chest, and just starts like running towards you while pushing through that little hole. Uh, it mm -hmm. is very angry. Uh, so we are rolling back up. Um, TP? Uh, did the creature get within range of me or did it stay back? It did, yeah. So actually, yeah, do okay. your uh, weighted action. All right. Uh, that's a six to hit. So that hits. Right. Uh, and then with the hatchet, uh, I'm going to do seven damage. Woo. With my weight, right. uh, with the action that I waited for, and then top of my turn, I would like to try to knock this thing down and try to take it to the ground. Ooh, all right, you're gonna wrestle it. Yeah, I'm gonna try to kick its legs out from under it uh, as we get in, like we get tied up a little bit. So I'm going to roll uh, athletics for this one, and I'm going to. Uh, that is going to be, that's a crit success. Oh, God, so, uh, that's going to hurt. <laughs> so, R1, I, we just get the one. Yeah. So I kick its legs out from under it, and as it's on its way down, I'm going to use my other AP to just bring the hatchet down on its head. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, that is also going to hit. So it's down, so 2d6. Uh, I'm gonna, you know what? We got those things and they're not going away. I'm gonna use two coins to explode both dice. Holy hell, all right. So that's gonna be um, 14, that's gonna be 19 damage as I just bring the hatchet down on its face. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, oh, it's like... I know, right? It's split open. Like, its bottom half is, is kicking around off to the side. Its top half is, is kind of trying to wiggle out from under your, your axe. There's so much blood on the floor. It's almost like you're slipping in it as it's just all over your hands and your face. Uh, you're pretty sure there's bits of the preacher in your hair. Um, it's still active though as it's shifting around trying to get that final last uh colin does that creature have an identifiable head it does it does you see the preacher's head kind of still has that uh cheshire cat smile on its face it's just missing its torso or its lower half its legs and such mm. which you, you don't told me need, before really. Sergeant, um, you know, you wanted to make sure that you were behind me so I didn't shoot at you, but you're on top of it now, and I'm going <laughs> to shoot it. Try and and it's identifiable. Try and but I do. should mention, I have a um, feature as a militia mm -hmm. uh, called Friendly Fire that as long as I can see and hear, I don't suffer any penalties uh, at firing ranged weapons at foes who are engaged with my allies. Oh. So, won't you take think any penalties. With a from name that. like that, you could just automatically shoot your friends. Yeah, I thought it would be like auto auto crit kill on all your friends. But, yeah. Uh, hey. <laughs> well, hey, you know the game is the game's not finished yet, so Spy Hander, if you're listening, make sure you change that ability. But um, yeah, friendly. So <laughs> make sure it's for only killing your friends. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna roll. I I too rolled a six. Uh, with my musket. So nice. you can only roll under over ninety or under ten, apparently. I know, like what? And what are what dice do you have? <laughs> and I rolled a six on the damage die, which explodes. Uh, and rolled on the second one another six, which also explodes. <laughs> so we're up to twelve. 
up to 12, and I rolled a 5 on the third one. So that's 17 plus my CB. Um, my, I always forget my CB is a set. Oh my god. Um, that's 24 damage. <laughs> okay, what happens? You, you, you've you done it. How does this, how does this happen? Oh my god. Um, I think uh, Phineas, in a moment of utter panic, just raises the musket and fires true the bullet um actually like grazes the threads on amos's jacket doesn't cause any damage but grazes the threads on amos's jacket um and he just i think phineas literally just fires with like a ah! and just unloads <laughs> um and the bullet the the musket ball uh gets into this thing's head and amos i'm sorry friend you get just like a Face full of blood and brain. Just explosion. <laughs> you get more preacher in your hair. You get so much... Your hair is covered in preacher. It's a whole problem. Um, and you are spattered in blood. But... Yeah, there's a, there's an Phineas. ear that kind of slowly goes over your forehead and drops on the ground. <sighs> Good job, Private. I just kind of like yank my the hatchet out. And patience. Uh, he reaches into his he reaches into his jacket, walks over to Amos, and offers you a handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually thank you, <laughs> Cecile. Patience and turning around and looking. Hey, everyone, accounted for. No. Stop terrible me. monsters <laughs> coming out of anywhere. No. <sighs> I'm alright. Patient, are you okay? I I'm fine. I never thought I'd see a ghoul in real life. I never thought a ghoul would exist until now. So at least I shot it. Looking down at the creature. Yeah, good good job, Phineas. That was. Patience. Yes. <laughs> Burn that book. Thank you. Definitely will do. Let's just go like and like Amos is gonna go over to the fireplace and start like pouring a little powder out and getting ready to do like a quick light sort of thing. Walk away as the house burns. Yeah, like oh, the whole shoot. house. I didn't know we were burning. Awesome. I didn't know we were burning down the whole house. I didn't know. This yeah, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I know that, that, that's that is an excellent point. Don't take any chances. Burn the whole house. That's a fair point. That is a fair point. yeah. Burn it down. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you've already killed a preacher. I mean, property damage is just kind of extra. Yeah, it's all gravy after this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys yeah, watch this. Yeah. Uh... Go ahead. I was just saying, definitely patience followed Amos and immediately put the book in the fire to make sure it was destroyed. Excellent. You looking at this flames before you, kind of engulfing the uh, the day sky and the fog surrounding you. Um, it's almost shivering to realize such things lurk in uh, not too far from where you are. Um, there's the enemy out there, and then it seems like the enemy is here, just at your doorstep, snatching your people up. Um, you do kind of, as you're gazing at it, uh, notice that there's a, a recently uh, buried um, person of some sort. Like, you see the, the loose soil and such uh, just off to the side of frozen snow upon it. Mm. Let's uncover it real Go. quick. Go. Yeah. Anyone recognize? Poke it with like a butt of the, butt of the rifle and like go take a look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, Bright kind of opens it up, or digs it out, <laughs> and uh, the first thing you notice is this kind of uh, red hair uh, in between bits of this humanoid scalp. 
uh, pale, and it looks like someone had shattered the top of the skull. It's caved in uh, with a little bit of these white maggots uh, moving about. A cockroach kind of flits over the eye hole. Oh my god. Well, so we found her. We found Miriam. Oh my god. I think the last thing Amos will say is to just the private Search her for the documents. Yeah, <laughs> he does. Yeah, uh, yeah it's kind of. Uh, it's wet and moist and smells like sweet eggs. Uh, as you, you pull it aside and you grab uh, <laughs> this. Um, uh, there's this envelope with a broken black wax seal. Um, and inside, it looks like there's these remains of a message that's been torn with only the word Winchester and a symbol besides it. Um, in order to identify the symbol, you can make an education test at a minus 20%. Hard. All right. I'm dumb as shit, so let's do this. I think this is patience. <laughs> What's the oh, yeah, super stupid. Nothing. Not even close. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute, I got you said it was a two crits to burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> but you said I it's a, a minus four? forty on this one. Minus twenty percent. So it's hard. Oh, oh minus twenty. <laughs> I think I've got it. Ooh. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh. You recognize the symbol as that of the Freemasons. Hell to the Should have yeah. known. Should have known. Yeah. That's the that's the sign of the Freemasons here, next to the Winchester. Well, they're all right, right? I mean General Washington's a Freemason. It's it's not a huge deal. Yeah, this is this is fine, private. Oh, are you saying that all the Freemasons are like big, like choppy monsters? Is that what they secretly? Oh, this changes everything. I <laughs> should probably get these documents back. Okay. Can we get a logger? We can get as At many loggers as you want. That's the answer I was hoping for. Thank you. Yeah. So returning to town, there is little rejoicing uh, because of the tragedy. Uh, but at least at the end of the day, the good guys have won. Evil was defeated, at least for a short time. Um, and you are getting uh, a couple of free lagas, uh, as well as a place to sleep for the night. Um, resting up, you were delivered a message. Um, it's a red wax seal. The message probably goes to, to the officer. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys me. come down for kind of breakfast or whatever. Uh, yeah, what do you do with the letter and what are you guys thinking about? So I, I got a wax sealed letter in the morning is what you said. Yeah. I would open it at the table and read it to the group. The letter speaks of another job in Boston. Uh, no doubt you are meant to head on over to the Maiden Tavern and ask for a Philip the Short and do so as quickly as possible. We're going to Boston? Eat a good breakfast, Private. We have a long day on the road. All right. Go socks. No, seriously, where are my socks? Have you seen my socks? Um, <laughs> where's this Boston? You'll find out. But... Oh, yeah. You'll find out. In a big way. Trust me. It has it has a way of making an impression on people. Is all I'm saying. 
sounds fun. Should be. All right. Yeah. Going and home. as you guys are are like heading on over to Boston, we kind of pan the camera back to the remnants of the household. Two small humanoid objects rise up from the basement hand in hand and gaze out towards where you guys are headed to. No doubt there are more horrors to come. And with that, we close the curtains. Everyone lives and thrives. That was Flames of Freedom, Grim and Perilous RPG, Swy Hander! Boston. <laughs> <laughs> My everyone thank name. you <laughs> yeah everyone thank you so much for tuning in for the sin eater uh a horrifying tale of ghouls and devilish things we like to give a shout out to anna and justin big crits uh thank you they needed it they needed it so much like you don't even know like because apparently we can't roll well at all it, out was, of it was very bad <laughs> yeah out of combat in, in combat, combat you're great. Yeah. murder professionals everything else is just kind of like ah, i don't know uh so we'll go around uh the the round table real quick uh, as we give out our outros uh tp with your amazing cosplay why don't you go at it uh i'm uh tom grant you can find me at tp underscore grant on twitter uh, this Friday, I'm going to be getting even uh, spookier, possibly, over with Holland on Master of the Game with a Monster of the One Shot, a Monster of the Week one shot, but really, it's going like, to be like three or four games. Uh, and very much looking forward <laughs> you know to that. You know by now. Uh, other than that, I really don't have anything going on at the moment. So come out, come by on Friday and watch us get spooky. All right, Brittany, go ahead. Well, this was a trip, Mitchell. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Brittany. Uh, you can find me on Brittany B. Writes, where I, I I retweet about anime and cry over anime. Also, I also have a writing blog called Brittany the Protector Writes, where I share flash fiction. And I have nothing going on, but maybe one day you'll see me again. When? I don't know. But I'm here. Catch me on the Discord. That's it. Excellent. Draku. That's me. Hi, everybody. Uh, you can find me so many different places. Um, I'm over here on Twitch. I'm a variety streamer, so I play a bunch of different video games. Uh, tomorrow's Throwback Thursday, so I'm going to be starting Banjo-Tooie because I just finished Banjo-Kazooie. So we're just playing through. That's, that's kind of that. Um, we just nice. finished up our season of Lessons in Deep Magic. So, so, so much fun. Um, and we'll be starting season two at the end of the month on that Monday uh so i'm looking forward to that that should be a great time um but yeah y'all can find me all over the internet at draku or again on twitch at draku3690 and i will see y'all around all right and colin uh this is actually really nice guys because everything i was going to plug has been plugged by you guys because you're in the two other things i was going to plug so <laughs> um you. Master the game on Friday, and then Lessons in Deep Magic uh, when the season starts back up again. And the only thing I have left to say, really, is that um, despite being a, a hapless uh, dupe for this entire thing, at the very end, that bullet was my legacy. <laughs> Mark it! Mark it! Are we going to get to 10? Come on. That should be up. 10. Pop it up. Hey, yeah. I'll burn two crits yeah. to add two more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, mine too. Uh, so, yeah, I am Mitchell uh, Penny for a Tail. Uh... <laughs> oh, for burning oh, crits, I'll burn mine too. There we go. Yeah, mine yeah, too. too. All, all of us. Burn all of our crits. Burn all of the Retroactively, crits. Retroactively, we had so many... <laughs> 
<laughs> Take being sassy. All right, that's fair. Um, please, please, please uh, go to Flames of Freedom, Grim and Perilous, right now on Kickstarter. Uh, whether uh, you like Zweihander, whether you like Freedom or the Revolution, uh, you are going to find something to love about this game. There we go. Um, so yeah, if you ever watched Hamilton and wanted to pick up and burn something, this is a game for you. Um, so definitely check it out on Kickstarter right now. Even if you're having economic struggles during the 2020 extravaganza, not so much. Uh, there is a pledge just for you, um, that, uh, they have there. So that's really cool. Uh, with accessibility, inclusivity, and all the amazing things that make such a great company, uh, already set up, uh, Flames of Freedom definitely will be a game that everyone can access and enjoy. Uh, so definitely check that out. Um, you can find me Penny for a tale here at ERP. I'm running a campaign coming up uh, about the end of this uh, month. Acts on Punk. I will be on Penny for a Tale next week uh, with Legend of the Five Rings Sunday at Party Wipe Games, where I play the sexiest cowboy. Um, and then I have a, a few other things. So uh, I look forward to seeing everyone, and everyone have a awesome revolutionary weekend or week whatever day it is goodbye we gotta sing some sort of hamilton outro (laughs) where's the glass to freedom (laughs) it is the dawn of the american revolutionary war of 1776 a tangled web of conspiracy spans north america In the war of survival, it does not matter what your creed, color, culture, or gender is. All stand together. Thomas Paine's common sense is held aloft in every rebel patriot's hands as they take up arms against the British Empire. But as the revolution has begun, something far more mysterious stirs. Agents of the occult intrigue both the Continental Army and Loyalist Redcoats. Freemasons conspire in the city of brotherly love. Marilyn is in the throes of a witch hunt by the Knights Templar. Amid the chaos, other grim fairy tales have emerged. Reports of witches have been seen in the Great Dismal Swamp. Indigenous Sakem say the devils called Manato walk among the living. Flesh-gobbling ghouls have been tunneling beneath Boston. The Pine Barrens of New Jersey are haunted by what the locals call the Leeds Devil. And worse still, an ancient enemy whose name is never uttered aloud seeks to consume all, loyalists and rebels alike. In this game, most people have either chosen to deny the supernatural or rationalize it away. A rare few accept it for what it is and act. You are among those heroes, and are destined for greatness or death. Welcome to Flames of Freedom, where your grim and perilous tale hangs in the balance.